Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 55 Live podcast here in conjunction with the WCWA Network. I am one of your co-hosts here tonight, your party host, California Fury, and I'm going to bring on right now my other co-host here, Mr. 55 Live, Jack Wallace. Jack, how are you going, mate? I'm doing very well for uh, 12.35 in the morning or at night. Um, I'm glad you're awake for it. Oh, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not going to miss another podcast for my sleep. Uh, as uh, we did speak about last, last week. Yeah. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, Jack fell asleep and missed out on interviewing the blue mini. I did it on my own, but look, it's okay, Jack, you're forgiven. And um, we're going to have fun tonight or well, this morning for us. And uh, this morning for the guy that we're speaking to here today. And he is a member of the Baldies. Former ECW superstar. He is the one and only king of the streets, Angel. Angel, how you going, mate? Doing good, man. How's everything, brother? Yeah, good, man. Good. good. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm pretty. I'm pretty marking out on uh, Jack's uh, Harry Potter scarf. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like it. <laughs> it isn't. Uh, it isn't Harry Potter, unfortunately. It's actually. Uh, so, have you ever heard of the AFL in Australia? Uh, is it that rugby? Uh, the yes. Australian rules football. Similar to rugby. Um, this is the okay. uh, t- team I go for, the Brisbane Lions, even though I've um, got no connection to Brisbane. But uh, we're doing well this season. Uh, let's get up to finals. So I thought, why not? You thought you represent, bro. But, yeah, but for exactly. this episode, it's a Harry Potter scarf. And let's just go with that. <laughs> let's, uh, let's run with the Harry Potter scarf for this one. I like it. That's uh, the so- biggest beer I've ever seen. What the hell are you drinking? Oh, it's That's- a long neck, man. Long neck. That's not a this- long, that is not a long neck. A long neck so, here is smaller than that. That's a 40 ounce. People in Australia yeah. drink a lot, man. People in a Australia 40. drink a lot. They call it a 40. A 40 ounce in New York City is, uh, that's, that's the size of a 40 ounce. <laughs> oh, awesome. You know, the, the long necks are like literally, I mean, literally, our long necks are like this big. Jeez, All like right. Out. Yeah, we call them stubbies. Yeah, those are long neck, long neck beers here. Really? It's, so they don't the, have the, the differences between Australia and America. They don't have the big <laughs> bottles then? Hmm. Yeah, we have the big uh, bottle. They, they, they call one, 40s, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a 40 yeah, yeah. ounce. Right, yeah, yep. that's a 40 yep. ounce beer. <laughs> you know. uh, so, uh, Angel, uh, the usual first question that we always ask on this podcast is you know, as a youngin, you had to have become a wrestling fan at some point um, before you got in the business, maybe. Some people, yeah. maybe not. But uh, how did you become a wrestling fan? It basically. Just like any kid, I was in junior high school and a buddy of mine was a huge wrestling fan and he had one of the classics magazines. I think it was Pro Wrestling Illustrated at the time. And on the cover was the Four Horsemen. So he asked me, hey, brother, you know, you're not into wrestling? I said, no, no, uh, not really. You know, you know I me, mean? I was, but not really. You know what I mean? It would never, you know, it's just like, oh, I like football, but I don't really watch it, that type of thing. So uh, and then he introduced me to the magazine. He goes, man, you got to check out, you know, NWA, man. Um, it's on TBS. Uh, there's a show coming on called Night of the Champions. And that was the first time Sting wrestled Ric Flair. Um, oh, huge. Yeah. So, so, that, so then when I saw that, that's when I got hooked. And you, and you roll in a fatty. Uh, uh, on a, that is awesome. Australia's rocks. Is it legal? <laughs> uh, no, it's not. But... Um... You, you know, need to come here, man. It's legal in Vegas and in Colorado. I've heard. I've heard. It's crazy shit. <laughs> hopefully, one day we'll, we'll, hopefully one day we'll come up to speed and all that shit. I hope that we do because... Uh, it's coming. It's coming. It, it has to be, you know. Um, uh, so, okay. So that's how you became a wrestling fan, more into the NWA stuff. Um, yeah. But I wanted to ask you about growing up in New York and what life was like. Well, I mean, I grew up in Queensbridge, Queensbridge in Queens, not in Queensland, like you guys, <laughs> it's just Queens. Um, and uh, I grew up, like I said, I grew up in Queensbridge and I went to school with, um, I don't know if you're familiar with a lot of rap groups, but like Mob Deep, Nas, yeah. I, went, I, I, was, I was in school with those guys. Ron Artest, he plays for the Lakers. He's known as Meta World. He's, yep. uh, yeah. he, you know, I knew him when he was a little kid. A lot of famous uh, rappers and athletes came out of Queensbridge. You know, um, it was just, a, it was a, a project. It was just a, a ghetto environment, you could say. So 
you know, that's where I grew up, you know, and then I just got into wrestling instead of running the streets, which I did a little bit, but wrestling got me off the streets a little bit to uh, stay out of trouble. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. Like me and my friends, like we didn't get up to too much trouble. We just uh, pretended to fight each other in backyards for many years. So uh, that Box, kept us boxing out of... kangaroos and shit like that, you know, stereotype. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, before you got into wrestling, uh, what kind of like jobs did you do? It's just, I mean, uh, I mean, God damn. I mean, I did simple jobs. I was a, uh, my first job was a cabana boy. Uh, cabana boy is, um, I don't know if you guys got him out there. You know, like in the country club, the kid uh, with the polo and, hey, kid, uh, can you bring me a towel to my, you know, to my, okay. uh, you know, it's rich people. I used to work there. It was a tennis court. Uh, Paul Sovino, Tony Bennett, you know, a lot of famous actors used to go there. And all I was was a kid just getting lounge chairs and getting them the drinks and stuff. And that was, they were big tippers. And then um, after that, I worked at a law firm. You know, I was like 19, worked there for a couple of years. And then after that, where the hell did I end up at? Um, you know, and after that, that's when I got into pro wrestling. I didn't really have too many jobs. I was more, I was more at home a lot. The real job was the tennis court, and then I got into the law firm, and then I got let go from there, and then I started working on the ring crew in ECW. All right. Okay. Uh, Jack, over to you. So uh, when did you start training with uh, Johnny Rods, and how was that experience for you? Was that um, during the uh, ring crew uh, stage? No. When I started – no, the ring crew thing – well, let me just go back. With Johnny, yep. I started with Johnny when I was 17. Then I quit. Okay, yep. Because during okay. that time, it was um, Big Sweet Williams, known as Hugh Morris, Taz, Big yeah. Vito LaGrasso, known, you know, Big Vito. Yeah. Um, uh, Damian Demento, he used to be in WWE back in the 90s. You know, he was going to yeah. be doing major angle with The Undertaker. He was from the school. So um, they kind of beat me up at the time. Well, really, Vito. He kind of beat me up and kind of made me quit. Because, you know, like in wrestling, you know, just like the Dr. D. David Show situation, you know, like, oh, wrestling's fake. You know, it's just play wrestling. And, you know, of course, I got beat up for that. So yeah. then I quit. And then I left that. And then um, true story. When one day I was watching TV and I saw Vito on TV wrestling the big boss man for WWF at the time. And, uh, you know, and then I saw him and I'm like, well, that's that motherfucker who beat me up. So then I said, you know, I'm going to go back. So then I went back at 22. Yeah, I was 22. This was in 94. And then I started training from Gleason's. And then I stayed at Gleason's for from 94 to 97, 98. That's when I got on the ring crew. Right. You know, right, I was okay. already wrestling. Plus, I went to, remember, I went to school training with Devon. You know, so Devon was a close friend of mine. So that's how I got my foot in the door. How I got my foot in the door is when we're at the school, we're working out. And one of the guys, you know, basically it was a simple conversation. I was like, hey, man, what, what you doing this weekend? It was like a Monday. He goes, man, I got to go to Philly. Uh, and I said, for what? And he's like, well, Devon invited me down to be a referee, you know, to train as a ref down in the ECW. Oh, all right, that's cool. That's cool. And that was the end of the conversation. When Thursday came, I said, hey, brother, you oh, you be leaving this weekend, right? In two days, like Saturday, right? You know, and he goes, oh, man, I don't think I'd be able to go because my car is busted. And I said, really, what happened? He goes, oh, it's just not working, and I don't think I'd be able to go. And I said, well, if it's okay with Devon, um, I'll, I could drive you down to Philly. So he goes, well, let me ask him. So then he asked Devon, and Devon said, hell yeah, tell him to come down and bring his stuff. So then when I um went down to Philly, I had a match, like they used to do these workouts, these like warm ups in the ring before the show. So it was like Tracy Smothers, uh, Guido, Nova, I mean, everybody. Chetty was in the ring and they were just worked out. It was just a wrestling workout. And then I had a good match with Nova, I mean, Nova with Guido. And then um, as soon as I went through the curtain, so, uh, Paul Heyman was talking to Sabu and RVD going over the, you know, the matches for that night. And when he looked up and he said, uh, he told him, hey, hold on a second. Hey, kid, come here. And uh, he looked around like, you're talking to me type of thing. And he said, kid, kid, come here, come here. Hey, what's your name? And I said, my name's Angel. And he goes, okay, you're Devon's friend, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, I, I like what I saw out there. Um, just stick around, kid. And I said, oh, oh, okay. 
And then I go to Diva and I said, Diva, I don't understand what Paul means, stick around. He keeps telling me, stick around. And he goes, if Paul told you to stick around, just stick around. And I said, yeah, but Diva, Angel, please just trust me on this, stick around. So then I was going to the ECW shows for free, meaning like, you know, like, oh, and this weekend they're going to be in Jersey. Next, and then they're going to be in, you know, Michigan. So I used to drive up there, you know, out of my own dollar. So then um, I was like kind of struggling because, you know, I was spending my own money. Yeah. So then yeah. I got fired. I got fired from my job. So then um, I said, Devon, I, I don't think I'd be able to come to the shows anymore because um, I lost my job and I don't have any money to travel. And he goes, hey, let me see what I can do. And then the following couple of days later, he goes, hey, I got you on Ring Crew. Doesn't pay much, but it will pay you to, you know, get to the shows. And then um, I got to the shows and little by little things started happening. And then that's how me and DeVito and, you know, guys like that got on. Right. Hey, Jack, before you keep going, I just want to say, yeah. um, when I was doing my research, Angel, uh, I guess your Wikipedia page sucks. Uh, oh, yeah, none, a lot of that stuff is fake. Not, none, not fake. I didn't do it. N- nothing on there was really helpful to me. So, like, there might be some questions that we have coming up that might be just a little bit not making sense because I thought that your debut was something else. And um, No, yeah. they said I was born in Puerto Rico at one time. I was born in Puerto Rico. Um, there's a lot of things that they have my age wrong. I mean, whoever did it, I appreciate it because, you know, it took a lot of work, but there was a lot yeah. of like, false information that I was like, all right, whatever, you know. And somebody asked me, I'll tell them the truth. But, um, and, you know, I didn't want to shit on the guy's parade, especially if they did it, on, you know, to kind of boost my, my popularity. Well, I think after this interview, I'm going to actually edit the Wikipedia art- article myself to make sure it's more like uh, up to date on what's a- what actually happened. Um, but yeah, uh, look, back to you, Jack. Yeah, so uh, rewinding him back a little bit. Um, so what was the hardest part about training for you? So obviously back in those days around 94, 95, the wrestling industry was very still very old school uh, and KFA was still alive. So how was it sort of for you uh, training? It was more gristle, meaning... Like, you know how they go to the performance center and they go, man, that beer looks good. Do you need to keep that down if you want me to finish this conversation? Because um, you're making my mouth water. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, but it was like in the performance center, which I'm not knocking it. It's just different. Yep. It's just, um, it's just, um, it's just a routine. It's just like roll. It's, it's not simpler. It's just more refined. In Gleason's during the 90s, it used to just be more rugged, more and more. Yeah. More. It's almost like, you know, like, um, okay, perfect example. Let's use rugby as an example. And let's just put football, American football together. So back in the days, rugby without a helmet, right? You go, oh, yeah. you know, real, right? So let's say rugby later, like you as a rugby player, and then later years pass, now the rugby team wears football helmets. You're going to say, no, nah, back in my days, <laughs> we didn't have helmets. So, you know, so that's basically how it is. It, it's not yeah. bad. It's just different because we were more gristle, more rugged. I'm not saying the people here are more rugged, but they're more cookie cutter, cookie cutter wrestlers, which again, it sounds like insulting, but they kind of, everybody's the same. Back in the days when you wrestled for WWE, you went to a school, you can't, you know, you got an opportunity to wrestle live. They gave you an opportunity to wrestle, to watch you. They see if they like you and they said, okay, kid, come to the next show. There was no, you know, you never, you just wrestle. Yeah. You know, everybody there is just, as, you know, from the Sasha. And again, it sounds like I'm cra- knocking them, but I'm not. The Sasha Banks, the the Charlotte Flairs, you know, all those guys, they all train together. They all do the same thing. Yeah. And Vince follows a script. You know, it's a, it's a, they call it the, the WWE way of how they work in the ring. Back then, it wasn't like that. You just wrestled. You go in there, hey, what we're going to do? This is how we're going to do it. Okay. All right, no worries. And just wrestle. It's a dance, you know, it's a feel, it's a touch. Now it's just like, it's just, it's more scripted and more, you know, it's just different. It's just, it's just, it was harder, man. Back in the days, I remember Johnny used to have this punching bag that weighed like maybe 150, 200 pounds. And he used to make you run the ropes. Boom, 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 run the ropes, run. And he'll take this big old punching bag, it was yellow. And he'll throw it at you as hard as he could. And you catch it and you take a back bump, boom. Then you have to kick out. Sometimes we roll over your nose. Your nose is bleeding. Cut your lip. You kick out. Run again. He'll pick it up. Boom. Throws it at you as hard as he can. 200 pounds hitting you. Boom. Take a bump. Kick out. So it was like that. Or he'll put it down. You jump over. He'll pick it up. Throw it at you. You catch it. Boom. 
I mean, it was rough on your body, you know? So that's what I mean. It, we're, we're more tough. You know, yeah. we know how to handle ourselves, you know, and it's just different, man. Yeah. I feel like everything uh, about wrestling today is so different. <clears throat> I mean, I'm only 23 years old. So, I mean, I've grown up in a, I've had a lot of unfortunate uh, times witnessing wrestling in my youth. Um, I did get to grow up with the, I did get to grow up with the ruthless aggression era though. So, I mean, it's redeemed yeah. in some way, but that being said though, um, even with uh, sort of crowd reactions today, it's, it's most of it seems so unnatural and it's all them trying to make the show about themselves. But uh, how was the story? How was um, your first match in front of a crowd uh, sort of back in those days? Was your first match uh, in ECW? No, it was just independence. You know, uh, Johnny used to have these things called school shows and um, I used to work at the school shows. No money, of course. It was just a lesson, learning lesson. Then um, I got me... I got to wrestle with Tommy Jeanette. Um, he was a, he was a, um, how can I explain it? Uh, you have, you have, you have carnivals out there, right? Those big old Ferris wheels and state yeah. fairs, yeah. you know, the fairs, they call them fairgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. So he used to go, Tommy Jeanette used to go to these conventions where, where um, he, uh, almost like, um, you know, like the latest popcorn machine, the funnel cakes, all those, those treats that, you know, machines and, so he used to sell wrestling to these these carnivals. So if they so he'll make a deal with these carnivals, and then we used to do the tour. So we used to leave, um, you know, we wrestle, and I'm using Australia, so you guys can understand, like Sydney, and then we'll go to Mel Melbourne, you yep. know, and then we'll go further up. You know, you just follow this these carnivals that went all, and it's not the same carnival; it's just different carnivals. And then you go to as far as you can go in Australia, and then you just come back down. You know, so um, it was just a simple show. And um, again, it was just like you wrestle twice a day. So you wrestle like it was like a three o'clock show and then like a six, uh, seven o'clock show right. and stuff like that. So um, but my first shows were like school shows and then it was just local independent shows, just like how you have any wrestling in Australia. Right. What about yeah, it's because um, like, I, I was I was trying to research everything that you'd done and Man, it's just like this shit all information about you. So, uh, you know, but that's yeah. interesting to learn about that. Thanks for um, sharing. Um, oh, no worries. Do, do you have any other fun stories of those early days in, in the wrestling business? What kind of stories? I'm just trying to think, uh, you know, I don't want to go too far in the wrestling just uh, <laughs> like if there, was, if there was any times of like something that happened that the, a lesson was learned from it or. Oh, yeah. I remember I was still, I was so new. And um, I was dressing for Johnny. It was a Johnny show. This, this time I was getting paid. Not much, but, you know, just pocket money. And I had to wrestle George the Animal Steel. Oh, oh shit. Man. And um, <laughs> nice, the most, most as nicest guy, nicest guy as can be. But I was new. and That's huge. And then um, we're in the ring, and he does his, you know, and George Steel character. And he goes to the corner, and he's taking off his shirt. You know, like George Steele, you see on TV and WWE or WWF at the time. And the referee, his name was uh, Billy Caputo. I always remember him. And out of nowhere, he tells me, attack him from behind. Just go attack him from behind. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay. No, no, no. So I listened to the ref and I ran and I blasted him from behind. Boom. And while he was taking off his shirt. And he took off his shirt and then he hit me, hit me good potato in the forehead. And I took a bump. And he broke character. He was like, don't you ever fucking, I mean, curse at me in front of the whole audience. Oh, whoa. Um, I mean, he broke, he broke character. And then I was like, holy crap. And it just kind of like took the wind out of my sails. Um, I mean, I still did what I had to do, but you know, when you're like, oh my God, I'm wrestling George Steele until you get yeah. yelled at and you're like, mm, you know, like a little kid. Yeah. So then um, afterwards uh, I went to the locker room and I said, hey, I'm so sorry. It's just the referee told me, to do this and he goes you don't fucking listen to the referee and he goes it's okay kid you're just learning but still don't ever listen to what he says you know blah, 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 you know whatever and yeah it's okay i'm sorry um that, that was that's one of the one story that was like kind of fucked up kind of a little bit so <laughs> that would be terrifying yeah it's not terrifying. It, was, it, was, it was more embarrassing it was more of embarrassing because you know he, he was a veteran you know did you have a word with the referee after that? Being like, why did you? No, no, I can't remember. It was Billy. I mean, Billy Caputo, I, I, through the years after that, I mean, I, he was one of those refs that you always saw all the time. Yeah. And he, he just died recently um, from COVID. 
Um, oh, but um, yeah, but he was like uh, not old, old, but like you know, up in the sixties, and yeah. then you know he died. But he was an all right guy. I just never asked him what the fuck, you know, because you're still new, and I never asked him, hey, what the fuck was that all about? I wish I could act, talk to him now and say, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> what was that all about? You know, he probably won't even remember. But me, I remember that shit was like it was yesterday. You know. So. Right. Um. So here's another complaint that I have about the Wikipedia article and and how vague it is. And I and I didn't just go by the Wikipedia. I I went through several other websites. But um, it says uh that you have a history of wrestling in Japan and Mexico. Um. But it, does, it doesn't say anything like where you worked, what companies you wrestled for or anything like that. It's very vague. Um, so I just want to ask you, like, when did you first go down to wrestle in Mexico and what that experience was like? It was during, um, it was during after ECW. So it was after, right. okay. Yeah, after ECW. The way that they've working. written it, it was, it was like you went there before you went to ECW. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of like, like a, blender of he took all my information and kind of just like blended it up and put it wherever it can fit well whoever um, whoever wrote it suck you suck dude okay whoever you are you suck okay keep going bro now my wikipedia page is gonna crash anyway <laughs> <laughs> no no but uh apparently yeah after ecw um i went to uh that's when i started traveling a little bit more and i went to japan and it was just minor companies in japan uh noah um uh it was Noah, I think, uh, New Japan. I wrestled a little bit. And then um, I went to Mexico for a couple of independent shows down there. Nothing too big. AAA uh, did it. C- uh, CMLL did that. And then um, and then I went to Puerto Rico. Okay, so it was so kind of it was kind of a back-to-back thing. It was like I went to Japan, came back. And then I went to Mexico, came back. And then I right. went to Japan again, came back. And then Puerto Rico. So did you spend a lot of time in those countries when you were wrestling there? It was like, only uh, like, a, it was like a week, week and a half. Nothing okay. too, nothing too like long term because I didn't have no deal at yeah. the time and stuff. So I was just, just working it, you know. I was just trying to keep busy because I was kind of waiting for WWE to pick me up. Right, so, okay. And, and, and plus, like at that time, like the indies in, in the US are like just – all these ex ECW and WCW guys are out there getting booked and blue many told us, um, or told me the other week that he was having a hard time getting booked because you know, there was, they were inundated with talent now. Yeah. Because what happened was, okay. With the ECW thing, Paul was so like vague, like he made it seem like we weren't going to fold. He was so adamant, you, you know, I, I, he knew, but he didn't want us to like jump ship. So what it was is that he just said, hey, we're not folding, we're not folding. So when, once WCW was bought out and then ECW, you know, everybody was jumping ship of ECW before the WCW thing because they yeah. had a hint that the uh, ECW was going to fold. So they already got to WWE. Right. When WCW folded, they bought everybody who was on the contract, you know, from the Mike Awesome to the Ric Flair, you know, everybody, Jeff Jarrett, all those motherfuckers. So he, had, you know, he had those guys, Booker T's, and then with the ECW guys, same thing, guys who were under contract. So, so they had, they just had a plethora of talent. They just, and plus September 11th happened, there was no work. So, right. so that's why I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta get work. Excuse me. So, um, so I was like, man, I can't wrestle for WWE because. They have all this talent. And if I did go where, go there, they wouldn't use me because they had everybody else. You know, I would have been sitting in the locker room. So basically, I just kind of put myself out to, to you know, get work until things got better. Uh, yeah, and a lot of those yeah. ACW guys weren't really doing that much. So, you know, they're already inundated with guys who have a name and it would be difficult. What are you saying? I don't have a name? That's fucked up. <laughs> you have a name, man. You have a name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We will bring that stuff up later on. But um, Tell uh, him, Jack, Harry Potter. I got a name. <laughs> He's got a name, Jack, Carl. Jack, back over to you. Back over to you, man. <laughs> Just mess with you. <laughs> so you, you mentioned before, um, obviously, getting into ring crew with ACW and, uh, me, and being told by Paul to uh, stick around. Uh, and What were your first impressions of Paul Heyman uh, overall? Dude, I mean, to be honest with you, Paul is... 
man, he could sell. He he's just crap. He, he's an intellectual guy. He's very he knows his shit. He's very charismatic. He man, he could sell you fucking. He could sell an Eskimo ice cubes. He is just so <laughs> charismatic. Yeah. And Bub, uh, Bubba, Bubba Dudley, he said one day, he said, you ever saw the movie Devil Advocate with Keanu Reeves and uh, Al Pacino? No. no I, I don't think I Okay, once, once, we, once, we, once you wake up tomorrow, when you get a chance, you got Netflix? Yeah. yeah okay, L- look for the Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino. The character that Al Pacino is, that plays, that's Paul Heyman. That's what Paul Bubba said. That is Paul Heyman to the T. So if you watch that movie, you will see how charismatic and how he just like, he's able to not manipulate, like just convince you to do shit. If he told you that you was going to make a million dollars tomorrow, you'll believe it. The way he yeah. just puts it out there, you'd be like, man, ooh, I got a million dollars coming tomorrow. He's just that smooth. So just watch that movie and you'll be like, man, now I, I, I can see how he is. You know. <laughs> right. I need to I need to watch it, but I have heard yeah, watch um, it. It's a good movie. I have heard in a lot of interviews and of course just uh, reading around that uh, Paul Heyman is extremely extremely good with his words. And I think that'd be terrifying, especially around that time where your job could be at risk. He's telling you one thing, but then you know, two weeks later he's out there on raw. So, see, but like the, the thing is this, he'll go to you, Jack, he'll go Jack. And you yep. say you go, hey, Paul, I hear that um, the company's having some financial issues. He goes, Jack, I will never lie to you. <laughs> You're one of my top guys. And if things were going to go south on my father's eyes, on my kids' lives, I yeah. promise you that we're good. You're my guy. And I will never let you down. You're going to be like, you're going to be like, woo, man. I'm good. I'm safe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he was that good. I mean, we, we went to the hill for him. And like I said, Paul, Paul, it is what it is. And like I said, we, our last show was in Buffalo, New York. And, um, and Paul, I mean, I swear to God, we're at the airport. And Paul's like, all right, guys, I'll see you guys later. And we looked at him going on the thing. And the next week, guess what? He's on Raw. Fuck. And fucking Rhino called me, said, this is like, I mean, we had the internet. But, you know, it was not like how it is now. Well, yeah. you know, he goes, hey, did you hear what's going on in the internet? I said, no, what are you talking about? He goes, did you not hear? And I said, what? Fucking company went bankrupt. ECW's oh. closed now, from a phone call. And I'm like, are you, no, you fucking with me. No, no, seriously, you fucking with me. And this is before September 11th. So this happened on, in January, in January of 20, 20 I mean, uh, 2001, 2001. 2001. So, you know, you got like from January to 2000 to September 11th, you had like what? more than eight months whatever and uh and then that shit happened you're like you know that just ecw fold and you're trying to get work and then you know you're you're trying to get the ball rolling and that shit happened kind of went to the shit oh yeah you know it's fucking one thing after another man it was say it was it was it sucked you know i'm just a more uh positive thing though and uh what seems to uh, and what seems like something that seems to happen with a lot of guys coming in uh to ecw uh, they start off on live events and their first opponent is usually Spike Dudley. Uh, tell us about that day, uh, which was December 5th, 98 uh, in Buffalo. And how did the ECW audience respond to you? I got to go. I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> well, my first, first appearance, I can still remember it. My first appearance was a run out because Jack Victory punched me in the mouth. And I remember that. I know he was before Jack Victory broke his leg. So they didn't know who I was. So it was just a quick appearance. My second appearance was I had to dress up in all black. It was a black car heart. I had a Halloween mask on, a hoodie. Oh, dude, it was fucking hot. Because I was wearing a hoodie, a jacket, the hood up, a fucking Halloween mask. You know, that rubber Halloween mask? And, you know, the, the lights, you know, the fucking lights were hitting on me. So I was sweating. And it was supposed to be... It was supposed to be an angle that I was supposed to be Mustafa for New Jack. I was just being used as the, almost like the Ric Flair Scorpion gimmick. Right. Yep. Remember, like he was all- the Black the Scorpion, old, yeah. The Black Scorpion, Sting, Sting, Sting. But at the end, it was Ric Flair. Yeah. So everybody else that was being the Black Scorpion was somebody else. And I was just one of those guys. Yep. Then after that, 
uh, after that, I did the Sid Vicious. It was, I want to say it was in Michigan. They wanted me to be security. And they said, Angel, we want you to dress up as security, as Atlas security. And the angle was Sid Vicious was going to come out and it was going to be Sabu and just incredible. And they were fighting in the ring and then Sid Vicious comes out and grabs, grabs both of them in the choke slam position. And then I grab him by his arm and then he just lets him go and he turns to me and he choke slams me outside the ring. So I had to take that bump. So the fans didn't really know who I was at the time. I was just a curtain jerker. So basically, and then I wrestled Tommy Rogers in Allentown, my very, like a real solid match. And then after that, I just kept wrestling matches and battle royals. And, uh, you know, so people were getting acclimated who I was. Um, and that's when CW was there. We first got together. And then, then we became the Baldies. I think that was in Michigan too, you know, so and stuff. And I'm not drinking, it's just water. <laughs> you Jack, you better stop sipping that beer wine. because he's going to be switching from water to beer soon. Yeah, uh, it's, it's only 11 o'clock somewhere, right? No, it's 12 o'clock now. 12 in the afternoon. <laughs> Green light. Um, so one of the questions that I did have was, um, you know, I, mean, I, need, I know that you uh, you obviously revealed that you were friends with Devon, um, but who I'm else? Still friends you... with that. That was friends with Devon. Still is. <laughs> still is. Um, who else? When you first got there, did you become friends with quickly in um, ECW? Tony DeVito, um, Danny Jordan, Chris Chetty Nova, Roadkill. Chili Willie. Because everything is a click. It's click. Not not bad. It's just everybody hung out with certain people. Yeah. yeah. And I was always hanging out with Danny Doran, Roadkill, uh, Tom Marquez, Bill Wiles. Big Sal. Big Sal's from Gleason's. So I know Sal for a long time. Yeah. Yep. We interviewed him. He's, uh, yeah. he's awesome. Awesome. Dude. Yeah. He's a good dude. Um, let me see. Who else? It was just a, it was just, um, yeah, it, that was, that was the group. That was kind of the, the circle a little bit. I mean, yeah, I was cool with Just Incredible and the stuff. It's just, again, RVD, hey, what's up, Angel? What's up? And we just kept pushing forward. Yeah. Uh, Raven. It was just that there were certain groups that just hung out together. And, um, yeah, there was times I drove with Sandman or, you know, Raven and, and stuff, but it was just not, I was not part of the, nothing bad. It was just, they just had their own thing, you know, the drug scene and you know, yeah. those guys doing gimmicks and shit. So right. it was just always around, I was always around DeVito and those guys, you know, pulling high spots around stuff. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have any fun like rib stories uh, with some of the boys back in the day? I'm trying to think. Oh, um, yeah, man. I remember one time, uh, HC Loke, uh, we were, uh, wrestle, we were doing ring crew and, um, and I wrestled all day. It was a hot summer day and, um, and fucking, um, yeah, I was just sweaty, man. My balls were just, oh, I got that nut butter just, <laughs> just built up. You know, if you just take a credit card and just scrape my nuts and you could just see the film and the, and the goodness <laughs> It was like a fucking Oreo, a, the, the stuffing from an Oreo cookie. <laughs> well, but, um, but, the, but Loke was laying in the floor, like next to me. For whatever reason, he was laying on the floor at the hotel room. And I just fucking took my finger and I went between my nuts and, and he, I fish hooked him in the mouth. Oh, <laughs> oh no. With that nut butter, man. And, and he, was throw, he was throwing up. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> Oh, it's fucking nasty, bro. It was built. It was good build up. Oh, that is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we used to pull ribs like that, or or we used to break in our whole, you know, break into other other guys' hotel room, and we were able to get in, and then, you know, like throw a bunch of toilet paper in the toilet, just yep. a bunch a bunch of toilet paper, toilet paper, and then just take a massive shit. So then we try to flush <laughs> it. That to the toilet paper won't be able to flush because all that toilet paper. We used to do shit like that. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so there's a lot. Of, awesome. Um, yeah, it's a lot of ribs. You kind of breaking up good stuff, man. Um, what, okay. what was the? Uh, can you hear me? Am I right? Yeah, yeah you're breaking up a little bit. Are you live yeah. in the basement. Is that like in a basement? He's outside. That's outside. That looks like no. In the basement. We don't have we don't have basements in Australia. Why is yeah, that? We don't have basements. So we don't have attics or basements. I don't know why. I'd it's... love to have a basement. 
That's a trivia. Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. because the, but the, like, ground, the ground is too hard or something? Or no, it's just it's just like uh, it's like how we don't celebrate Halloween, kind of thing. Like well, when we, people try to, but it's more of an American thing for some reason. Basements and attics seem more like an American thing, but in Australia, it's very rare. Well, it's in Canada. Um, that's weird. I never thought about that. I really thought, yeah. I mean, that's something that you just taught me something. I never experienced that. You know, okay. yeah, we don't really celebrate Halloween. We just love Halloween. I mean, you know, the horror and stuff. I mean, I know you guys don't celebrate certain things. Like today's Father's Day, right? Or was it yesterday for you guys? Nah, that uh, was today. Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, yesterday yeah, see, now. Yeah, for us, it's in June. So, and shit like that. So Yeah, no, I, I think Australia changed the date of Father's Day so that it um, wasn't too close to any other holidays so they can make enough money off it. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, I think that's pretty much how it is. Yeah, that um, motherfucker asked me uh, yesterday. Uh, I was talking to him yesterday. He's like, he's like, with his Australian accent, he goes, oh, when do you celebrate Boxing Day? I was like, motherfucker, we're from America. We don't celebrate Boxing Day. It's on our calendar, but we don't do that shit. Boxing you know? Day is an English thing. It's, yeah, uh, but yeah, but you it's guys been adopted boxing. by us because we, we adopt everything that's English. Um, because whatever. obviously, you know, the queen and all that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, we don't celebrate. I mean, it's on our calendar. If you look on our calendar, you see Boxing Day on the on the thing, but we don't, not too many people are like, what is, and you know, Americans, they'd be like, oh, Boxing Day. And they'll think it's Boxing Day. Yeah. <laughs> Most people, people consider Boxing Day hangover. Yeah. Because you're getting fucked up the night before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like you're, uh, was it, uh, what is it? You got uh, the cookies, the, Annex? Anzac, Anzac, Anzac cookies. Uh, yeah. Anzac yeah. cookies. Yeah. Yeah. He's like telling, you know, actually he sent me some and I'm like, oh, what the fuck are these? And he gives me the whole fucking story. And I'm like, well, no, we don't celebrate that, but these are fucking tasty cookies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I call them anthrax. Anthrax cookies. No. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's because he goes, it goes, I said, uh, one time I said, oh, yeah, man, I got some aluminum here. Aluminum? I mean, aluminum. <laughs> Aluminium. I said, oh, what the fuck is aluminium? This, you know, I guess it's aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's your question? Uh, did I, I don't even know if I asked it, but um, did I say, like, did you party a lot back then in those days, you young lad? Like, what's the partying scene like for for your crew? Or, you know, I guess you, you party with the, of, other, the other clubs A lot of well. fucking, a lot of rats, a lot mm -hmm. of groupies. The weird thing about then, it was, just, it, was a, it was a rock style lifestyle, man. You know, rock and roll. It was just a lot of women. A lot of women. Right. Oh, yeah. Women. I mean, that shit that like if I told you stories about shit like that, you think I made it up. That's how fucking crazy these Please indulge were. us. We we would love no, I mean, to. There hear. was just there was like orgies and there was just like just ring rats just coming out of the work. Like now, since it's social media enough. well, it's hard because now you can't do things and everything's recorded. Yeah. Back then it was not recorded. You know, that's yeah. why I don't understand like like how guys, how guys like the wrestlers now, how these girls are coming out of nowhere saying, well, he did this. And they're like, and they believe what these girls, you know, like, I'm not saying anything bad, but like that happened four years ago. Yeah. If it was such a big deal, you should have reported it then. You know how much yeah. shit, I mean, the shit that these guys did compared to the shit that we did, I'm surprised shit, you know, Bitches are not coming out of the word work for the shit that we did. And I swear to God, if I would love to see a fucking bitch come out of nowhere and try to put me on blast, because I never had to force a woman to do anything that they didn't want to. It was all consensual. Absolutely. And I'm talking some, I'm talking some crazy, like, porno shit. So if they came out of nowhere and said, well, the king did take it. No, I didn't take advantage of nothing. You could have walked out that door free as you came in. You decided to do it. Yeah. And I asked, if you would have said no, I would have respect that. We didn't have to force nobody. And I think a yeah. lot of these wrestlers don't have to force nobody. We're, we're a celebrity status where women hold us. And again, I'm not trying to put to my own horn, but you know, if you're a rock star, if you're, if you, if you're John Bon Jovi, you know, pussy fell out of the sky without any hesitation. Do you really mm. think he had to force women to, to have sex with him? And no, if he did, and, yeah. And if the girl said no, he goes, okay, kick rocks next. Yeah, did they have to? I'm I'm pretty sure Disco Inferno the other week said something like, uh, "All these guys are getting in trouble now. None of us are getting in trouble because we were all over, so we didn't even <laughs> have to like force anyone to do anything because it just came to us so easily." Guys, That's these what I'm days, saying. yeah. But see, I don't think the guys these days are doing this, the, anything different than we used to do. It's just these. 
whoever, girls or guys, whatever you want to put it, or, you know, they're working these angles where like, oh, five years ago, I just felt, okay, you don't have to do what, you don't have to do nothing that you don't want to. If, if you know, and uh, uh, Jack or, you know, like, and I'm using Jack as an example because his name pops up right in front of me. But you know, you know for a fact that if, if you was a pro wrestler yep. and a promoter came out to you and says, hey, Jack, I'll make you heavyweight champion, but you got to suck my dick. There's two options, right? There's two options, right or wrong? <laughs> yes or no? If you said yes, that's your choice, correct or not? Yes, correct. Now, you did it. Or you didn't do it. That's your choice. If you did something that you didn't want to do, that's still your choice. Exactly. Because all you had to do is say no. <clears throat> but if you did it and 10 years from now you became a superstar and you say, hey, this promoter took advantage of me. No, he didn't take advantage of you because you had a choice. Yeah. You didn't have to do it. But you was afraid that if you didn't do it, on you, you was afraid that if you didn't do it, you would have not got pushed. And now that you're a superstar, you'd be like, well, if I didn't do it now, now I wouldn't be a superstar. So that would have affected my career back then. If I didn't do it, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I sold my soul to the devil type of bullshit. You know what I mean? If you yeah, look yeah. at it. So no, it's yeah. your choice, man. You don't have to do nothing you don't want to. It's so like the people... comedian Louis C.K., man. Like yeah. he asked the girls if he could masturbate in front of them because that was his thing like, what, 12 years ago. Yeah. It happened. And then all these years later, they come out of the woodwork and they want to like, talk shit and then he loses everything that he had because everyone bails at him straight away but they had a choice to make a decision do i want him to masturbate in front of me or not exactly yeah, they're gonna be like all i had to say is are you stupid motherfucker hell fucking no and he would have been like oh, okay but no they were like well i have to do it because it's louis ck and then i won't be able to work and he'll fire and, me and he wasn't you, even like hugely famous at that point so i mean is yeah, this? but you're making you're making yourself you you already put in the scenario already you put in the car before the horse you're already saying like if I don't do it I'm not gonna have a job he's gonna fire me I won't be able to get any opportunities I'm gonna be blackballed you're already putting yourself for failure you already already putting that in the you already putting that in the mix so I'm gonna do it yeah because yeah. I already think this is what's gonna happen exactly you know that, it's just bullshit dude it I, I think. Cancel culture is fucking ridiculous. I'm going on the record and saying cancel culture is fucking bullshit. Well, bullshit. like, didn't Jack Gallagher get, like, in the shit because he ripped some girl's dress, like, 10 years ago at a party or something like that? I mean, Sorry, yeah. Yeah. come on. Women like, do. Women you do, do dumb shit when you're drunk, when you're young. It doesn't mean that, like, the 98% of the rest of your life, you're a fucking asshole. You just, you did well, one stupid thing, like, 10 years ago. But think about it, like, who's that guy in AEW? I forgot his name now. The one that said uh, Sasha Banks, he'll rape the shit Sammy out of Sammy Guevara. He already apologized for that. Audience. He apologized that a long time ago, you know, and stuff like that. And now all of a sudden they were sending him to counseling and all this bullshit. I'm like, fuck it's you. Fuck I already bullshit, apologized. Man. I'm like, fuck you. But he's so afraid. See, that's the problem with this business. You're so afraid. Same thing. It's the same thing. If I don't do it, I'm going to lose my spot. Then I won't be able to get pushed. See, it's the same scenario. You're doing it because you're being forced to do it. Because if you say no, you think that this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And and exactly. before we get on to the next topic, Jack, I just want to say this thing. I hate that there's fans out there that do a deep dive on people's Twitter accounts. And oh, like a Lars Sullivan, like on that bodybuilding.com forums, he said something horrible or whatever. Like, why are people trying to dig for shit to try and get people in trouble? Like, I'm sure some of the stuff people done are stupid and they feel bad about it. But fuck, man. I don't like, give a fuck. I, I don't give keep... two shits. If, if there's a fan out there that wants to dig in my past and you think you can bring up some fucking dirt on me, go ahead and knock yourself out. Because unless you fucking have some semen stains on the fucking walls and you have a collection of my fucking uh, condom packets <laughs> and you better show me the car facts because if you come up with some speculation saying that I did this to somebody and I know for a fact, and I tell you, shoot, I never had to force nobody to do anything. So whatever chick comes out of the work and says, well, you just made me do this. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I never did it. Fucking amazing. Over to you, Jack. Yeah. Um, so did you come on TV straight away with the Baldies or were there other ideas floating around about how to introduce yourself to television? Oh, dude, there was one idea. Paul came up to me and said, Angel, I got an idea. 
I'm gonna have you be the bodyguard for the insane clown posse. Oh fuck! We're, oh gonna, have, we're gonna have you paint it up. We're <laughs> negotiating a deal to have them come in, and you're gonna be their muscle. Oh. I'm like, and I just, you know, I'm like, okay. It never happened. All right. Did the Aussies ever make an appearance in ACW? They, they did. I think they did a couple of things here and there. But, but what happened was, I think something fell through. If I remember correctly, something happened that went sour. Nothing crazy. Just they just couldn't come to an agreement about something because after that, it, they said it's just never. They said uh, they're not coming, so just don't worry about it. So I don't know what happened, but that was going to be the idea. Picture me in fucking clown makeup. Yeah, I don't want to picture you as a jungle like, I have fun. Yeah, man, I'll be looking like the fucking it, you know. But, <laughs> you know, I think what else? Then one day, I'm trying to remember how, and it's it's I don't know the chronological order. I just remember certain moments, yeah. and I know that they were gonna make me into New Jack's tag team partner, the New Gangsters. I remember oh, really? that one time that I was thrown out at the time, but I don't know if that was before the Baldies or after the Baldies or a turn okay. or something was going to happen that I would have turned. I, I just can't remember, but I just remember that conversation. So there were some ideas out there. So who DeVito, De, DeVito was going to be his gimmick was uh, you ever saw the movie American history X? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was, gonna be his gimmick he had there's a match with him and taz and if you watch the match he was wearing the doc martin boots the shirt they were gonna push him as this neo-nazi character oh damn and and it only happened one time in the in the taz match taz picked him up and you got to find it but taz picked him up by the legs and slammed him through the table by the legs almost like uh what um hardcore holly used to do the oh the alabama Alabama slam slam. Yeah, yeah yeah that slam yeah, it was through the table. Oh, and, right. I, and that was Sick. it. So, yeah. Sick. <laughs> but that was DeVito's gimmick. So I think you mentioned it before, but who came up with the idea of the Baldies? It was uh, Paul. It was Tommy Dream and Paul. If I remember, um, we're sitting in the back. It was me. And he, well, it was not me and DeVito was sitting together, but he was like, hey, um, Tommy came. Hey, we have this idea. And Paul said, have you ever heard of the Fordham Baldies? And I'm like, no. And he goes into the whole story about the Fordham Baldies. It was in the movies called The Wanderers, but they were an actual gang in New York City. But in the movie The Wanderers, there was a bunch of bald dudes called the Fordham Baldies. Yep. And he was like, hey, we have this idea. We're going to do this faction where it was me and it, at the time. And I still, you know, and I, I do have it on, it's on YouTube of us making that first appearance um, of uh, the Baldies as uh it was me like we jumped spike and um it, it that's that was it it was just everybody was dressed differently and um you know but i'll you know i'll send you know you know you have jack wallace on both screens i don't know why i don't know why it doesn't have my name it's so annoying that means it's he's the account oh okay because i'm like looking i'm like wait a minute that's I don't know why it keeps logging into your account. Like I logged into your account one time and now like my account will never log in again. Yeah. You probably did like a sign in automatically stay in logged in forever. Oh, right. Okay. No big deal anyway. Cause if I can't make it, then here, there you are. We'll get to go. It happens. It happens. But, um, but yeah, but that's what it was. Paul just came up to me and, and when we made the, the appearance on that, um, as a group, it was me, Rob Price and, uh, it was, it was just one of those matches. It was pretty cool. So it was it was from a film. It was called The Wanderers. It was a movie called See, the Wanderers. See, your Wikipedia article says it's from an actual New York gang. I'm going to have to edit that shit and get that shit out of there. <laughs> but the, the Fordham Baldies was an actual gang at the time. Okay, right, okay. Yeah, they're, they're legit. They were, were a legit street okay gang. so it was a true story uh, film or was it it's a true story the, okay. wanderers, the, the wanderers was a fake movie they just used the actual character of the baldies from the history you know what i mean okay that's all it was it was just uh that there was nothing nothing special it was just they were an actual gang and they used it in the movies okay yeah. So, um, a little sidebar, what were your first impressions of Tony DeVito? Uh, you mentioned he was sort of your, one of your main first friends 
in ECW other than Devon. So what were your first impressions of him? DeVito was a cool dude. He was very hot-tempered. He's Italian. So, you know, stereotypically, you know, DeVito was just a hot-tempered Italian. And, um, and uh, but he really cool. I mean, he, DeVito had a lot of history um, with, um, and I'm just looking up for that video for you. That's why I'm looking on the other side of the screen. I have a two monitor thing, so, but, um, but, uh, DeVito, DeVito's history, like me, I went through the independence. Yeah. DeVito wrestled a little bit of the independence, but he was a WWE. He was always with the WWE. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he, he was always a jobber. He always worked with, uh, with a uh, WWE at the time, um, with, uh, with just with a Mike a Mike Bell, and he was okay. always doing. That. If you Google Tony DeVito, all his matches is WWF. W. That's why he's so close, not close, but he was always popular with um with Vince. Vince like DeVito, how you doing? You know that like <laughs> he they they those they he knows DeVito by name. Like me, he goes, hey, you're a. I'm at Johnson, right? No, I'm Angel. <laughs> <laughs> like, he is real tight with DeVito. Not tight like that, but, you know, like, when he was there from the beginning of WWF. So, DeVito was used continuously. So, he knows DeVito like like that. Yeah. Right. I didn't know that about him. Yeah. See, don't look at Wikipedia. It actually, go, go to the straight to the horse's mouth. Yeah, I fucking hate Wikipedia, man. It's, it's fucked us over several times. Um, I oh, guess Jack is back to me. Yeah, it is. Um, so, okay. The Baldies. <laughs> they put you guys, you and Tony, with Vito Lo Grasso. Um, they had the beginning from my memory, and PN News joined the group too, right. too soon after. And Rod um, Price. So, like, and, and Rod, yeah. Um, so, what was uh, the first time, you know, so you saw Vito again, like, after what had happened years prior? Well, Vito was the thing about Vito is like we didn't get along, and um, it, we just didn't get along, and it was just one of those things. It was just one of those things, man. It, but we eventually, we eventually, I realized Vito was just doing things to to make me understand the business. Right. He was, um, he was just one of those guys that just really was. It was like tough love. He beat the shit out of me to show me that, you know, you earned, um, you know, you have to pay your dues and, and that thing I just sent you in Facebook, that's the, okay. the, actual, the first appearance of the Baldies together. So if, now you have it. Have okay, it. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. So, um, yeah, DeVito was just a, a different, different breed, but once you realize like once you you've been in the business, you go, man. You know, Vito is right, because at one point, you know, like when I was like, man, I'm just, you know, I've been doing independence, you know, I, I've been up and down the road, and Vito used to go, what do you mean you you've been in the business? Who you be? What, you, what have you done? You know, you're like, man, he's a dick, you know, and uh, but it's not that. It's just it's true. You know, he's been up and down the road. He's traveled all around the world. You know, he's done things. So he has paid his dues to say he could bitch if he wants to bitch. But now that I'm at that level, now I realize what he meant. So now I, right. I respect that. So, Okay. So there wasn't any like sort of confrontation. Hey, man, you fucking beat the fuck out of me. What was your fucking problem or anything like that? No, we didn't get along. We really didn't get along. We, I had really hated his guts. But then when, when I was wrestling for Tommy Jeanette, the guy who, um, true story, um, me and Kid USA, he's the Kid USA was the guy who played the stunt double for Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler. Okay. Yeah. So his name is Armand Cesare. He was a wrestler. I traveled up and down the road and he's really lucked out with the Mickey Rourke thing, which is awesome for him. But um, we were driving to the next show from New York to wherever and my phone rings, my cell phone. And uh, hey, brother, it's me, Vito. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, hey, I'm on fucking Vito's calling me. Yeah, what's up? Hey, man, when you guys going to get down here? And I'm like, um, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Well, I'm in room two. And I'm making the room up. Well, I'm in room 216. Why don't you come by? Once you get settled in, come to my room. Okay. <laughs> Hang up. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> so then we show up and then he's like, Hey, what's going on, brothers? How's everything? It's good to see you. You know, it's like, and you know, you know, you're looking at him and you're like, but in your mind, you're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's just, you know, and then we kind of like then as we but then now then we're on the road together and we're wrestling and we're traveling and we're eating together and we're hanging out together. Then it just started we started building this camaraderie and it, then then it just started meshing. Okay. I hate that motherfucker. I mean, I wanted de- nothing but death. But now we're good friends. Now we're good friends and I just have nothing but love for libido. It's just weird I- how two worlds collide and then become good friends. Absolutely, man. And uh, before I throw it back to Jack, I just want to say like, um, from the get go, like I've, I've only in the last few months, I've seen most of the De uh, and the run that you guys had from the get go, you know, you guys, uh, you, you must be thrilled with the heat that you're getting. You, you, you're doing a great job just straight out of the gate. How are you feeling? How the, the group was going from the get go? My honest opinion, really, um, I didn't like it at first. Reason why I didn't like it at first is because I was trained to be a wrestler. You know, I was like doing like, I was doing shit like um, AJ, I mean, not like AJ Styles, but you know, like high spots, diving off the top rope. Right. You know, I was doing wrestling stuff, you know, all the stuff, the flashy stuff for years doing that stuff. And then all of a sudden I became, um, you know, hardcore. pigeonholed into being hardcore, kind of like Ax- Axel Rotten. Axel Rotten was a fantastic yeah. wrestler, but he was pigeonholed into being hardcore because of what he, <laughs> some of the angles he's put in, and all of a sudden they just think that's all he can do, but he can actually wrestle. Interesting. Yeah, and that's the funny thing because we have matches. Oh, dude, I had some awesome matches with RVD and Kid Cash, and 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 we wrestled, and people were like, "Holy shit." These guys can wrestle. When we had an opportunity to wrestle, like wrestle, wrestle, like Danny Doran and all that stuff, we had some awesome matches. And people were like, oh, shit, these guys can wrestle. So they're not just, you know, chair shot, chair shot, chair shot, you know, right. street, street brawling. You know, it was a treat when me and DeVito got in the ring. When DeVito did moonsaults and, you know, just these, these crazy moves and stuff. And, I mean, I wish I could find that RVD kick cash match it was just non-stop action just good spots it was fun and then when i wrestled like um there was some matches with balls mahoney and uh tanaka that right. we had some good like wrestling matches i mean yeah it was a little hardcore stuff in there but there was some re- good wrestling spots that we did in that ring it was awesome it was a blast yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but i not- hated it i didn't want to be known as like you know well, you know i just didn't it, it just man- put a like being something. like my matches are like, I get hit with a weapon. Now I'm going to hit him with a weapon. Now I yeah. get hit with, you know, you're more capable of doing other things, but now you're being thrust into this position where your first big feud was with new Jack, which is what those matches are about. So from then on, everyone's just going to expect this is what angels all about. This is what he does, but oh, you yeah. can do more. Yeah. 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 It, it was a treat. Like I said, it was just awesome. I mean, but like I said, I mean, the ECW and the Baldies and tagging with DeVito was a blessing. I mean, you know, it was just my, not my ego. It was just, I just wanted to wrestle too. And DeVito wanted to wrestle too, but we accepted our jobs as yeah. the Baldies. And like I said, I, I learned so much. I mean, uh, God rest his soul. I mean, Dusty Rhodes. I mean, a great conversation with Dusty Rhodes. Terry oh, wow, Funk. Yeah. You know, Chris Candido. Um, you know, we talked a little bit. Um I mean, Mike Awesome, you know, I mean, we, I mean, half of those guys are all gone. I mean, except Terry Funk. But, um, you know, it's just funny how it's like, man, I was there with Dusty Rhodes, you know, the American dream, you know, <laughs> having a conversation with. And the funny thing is that he called me over. That's not like, hey, Mr. Rhodes, can I ask you a question? You know, like any other wrestling. I was walking through the locker room. It was after a pay-per-view with me and New Jack. We wrestled in Atlanta and I did my promo that day. The next day at the ECW arena, because I, I always remember, you know, I'm walking by and he's sitting there and I just, you know, I already spoke, hey, said hi to him and stuff, but I was just walking by and he goes, hey, kid, come here. And then Dusty, the legendary Dusty Rhodes gave me some advice and he goes, hey, I saw your promo. I really loved it, but I have an idea. You know, I just have a little criticism, you don't mind, if you will, you know, <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, yes, yeah, sir, you know, what is it? And he said, hey, you know, do this, this is better. And I'm like, man, thank you. I, I, I'll take that into account. 
man, you know, you, you know, when you get an advice from a legend and it's no longer around and, you know, it's like a like an honor, man, because I spoke to Dusty totally. Rhodes. It's like meeting yeah. Elvis Presley and then you will never meet. You know what I mean? Exactly. Just, yeah. I get you. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. That, that means a lot, man. Like, you know, being a wrestling fan growing up and then you're in the business and that's someone who's on such a high level to have him give enough of a shit to take you aside and be like, Hey, I care. This is what I yeah. think that must. Yeah. That, that those memories yeah. must mean the world to you. Oh yeah, man. Dusty Rhodes, man. Awesome dude. Awesome dude. You know, I mean, yeah, there's so many other stories about him meaning, you know, like when you watch shoot videos and go, oh, he's a dick, he's this, you know, everybody got to shoot an interview about something. Yeah. But my experience with him, class act man, just awesome. And I'll always remember that moment. Awesome. Over to you, Jack. I'm going to be back in a minute. You got to piss all that wine. I do. I got to piss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I, uh, that's why I saw my video muted. He's like, because oh, Australia, we don't have basements. <laughs> yeah, we just got toilets that uh, flush the uh, <laughs> other way. <laughs> That's so, one of the things I told, uh, I told Pierce, I said, I want to go to Australia. I really want to go, you know, to, to I want to go and fucking like, because I, I insult him, I always joke with him. I said, dude, I love Crocodile Dundee, which I do love Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> and I said, I want, you know, he goes, dude, it's not like that in Australia. No, don't fuck it up for me, man. It's Crocodile Dundee. I like her. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I, won't, like I, won't, I won't fuck it up for you. I'm just going to let you come here and see it for yourself. But there are some places here that are very stereotypical to Australia. Some places fucking nail it. And, like uh, like that movie uh, Wolf Creek. You ever saw the movie Wolf Creek? Yeah, yeah. That's um, yeah, like some crazy ass shit. I had um, a mate who was uh, actually living not very far, not far away from uh, the Wolf Creek Crater. Uh, the start of this year before the COVID stuff happened. He's living in a town called Kananara, which was probably about it'd be, probably be about a two hour drive away from the actual Wolf Creek Crater where all that shit in that movie went down. And uh, they ended up doing a uh, TV spinoff as well, which is actually fucking. It's actually interesting. Yeah, it's like two it, movies, yeah. like Wolf Creek and Wolf Creek Two, about this. Yeah, about the guy killing everybody. And fuck that. Oh man, it's fucking scary, eh? And typical of that area as well, because there's a lot of fucking crazy fuckers, man. Yeah. Like oh, the dingo ate my baby. That's my cheesy Australian accent. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's a fucking so, classic. Uh, yeah, everybody thinks of that line. The dingo ate my baby. Yeah, that's the typical fucking Australian line, like uh. It's always uh, either the throw another the shrimp barbie. on the barbie. Yeah, like God, we oh, never yeah. put shrimp on the barbie. We don't. Why would well, we do that? Well, that's the shit in the commercials when he goes, "Come to Australia, mate, and put a shrimp on the barbie." And you're like, "Oh <laughs> shit!" You know, because that's Paul Hogan's commercial in the U.S. Yeah, and everyone thinks we drink Fosters. No one drinks Fosters over here. Fosters, but it's terrible. Australian. It's Australian for beer, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fosters. I don't drink it anymore, but I drank one. It came in a big old fucking can. I'm like, oh shit, fuck that. You know. <laughs> oh man, Foster's is it's awful. It's watered down shit. Yeah, but that's what it is. That's awesome. You know. <laughs> um, so you feuded with New Jack over the moniker of being King of the Streets. And this is a really huge feud because <coughs> it uh, seems at every turn you kept getting uh, uh kept gaining pinfall victories over him. Uh, what was Jack like to work with, and how was it? Uh, was it ever a little intimidating, considering he was a little unpredictable at times? Jack is uh, unpredictable, and um, and yeah, he is intimidating. But I had a good relationship with him. I never had any issues with him. I respected his his knowledge. I did what I was told, and we never had any issues. Jack, the thing about Jack is that all he had to do was turn a little bit to fuck you up, yeah. you know. To hit you with the side of the guitar. I, I I never ever ever had any fucking issues with him. He was always awesome. He always took care of me. We always had awesome matches. Now with the Vic Grimes situation, yeah, he fucked him up, and yeah, I mean he beat up a bunch of dudes that are like basically. I mean he's he is crazy from like like me on the outside watching the shit happen. But it never happened to me because when people ask me, I'm like, nah, dude, I, Jack's cool, man. I always had a good time with Jack. Yeah. But when it happened, when I saw it from like using you, you know, Jack, you wrestled him and he beat the brakes off of you and you're like, oh shit, you cut that kid open. Like, you know, I mean, I see some shit like perfect example. We're in North Carolina, South Carolina, and there was a kid, a little white guy, yep. try it out. 
and Jack and Jack sitting in, in, the, in, you know, it was a closed, you know, the fans weren't in there, but he was there for a trial. And Jack just sitting there in in the in the seats where the fans sit. He's just sitting there, and the guy's wrestling, showing his shit, and all of, for whatever reason, he looked down because he was working the audience. So he picked Jack. He just picked Jack for whatever reason. He goes, "What you looking at, boy?" <laughs> Oh shit! And Jack looked up, and he just looked like, "Yeah, you boy, I'm talking to you, boy." And um, you know, and of course, I didn't think nothing of it. It was just like he was just working the audience to work the match. So I go in the back, and um, this is afterwards, and I'm just sitting there, and the kid's literally sitting next to me, lacing his like taking his boots off, and Jack just comes into the locker room and go, and just oh, punches wow. him in the face. Who the fuck you call him boy? And I'm like, holy shit. The kid's, his, his kid's feet went so far back because he went into the cl- like a, a clothes rack. There was some, some shit hanging on there. And then he <laughs> went through the clothes. And Jack's just beating the brakes off him. And I'm like, I think this is an ECW moment. So I jumped in and started beating the brakes off the kid too. <laughs> Cause I, figured, you know, I gotta, I gotta take, I gotta take part of this because you know, if I don't jump in, he goes, Hey, I, you didn't help me so we just beat the shit out of the kid and, and just <laughs> threw him out the back door i mean literally threw him out the back door with his shirt all ripped he threw his fucking gear out and he goes who the fuck is he calling boy man what the fuck who the fuck is he god damn man you know the motherfucker <laughs> you know and stuff jack was jack was one of those guys you know like i don't know man he was one of those guys like again he'll say like um like like you'll say like you say like, "Hey Jack, man, you 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 a real tough black dude, man. You a real tough black dude, right?" And the next day he goes, "What do you mean I'm a tough black dude? Nothing. Jack. It's like the Joe Pesci. Like See, I was mean? gonna say Joe Pesci. Like, well, yeah. am I like a clown? <laughs> yeah, like that. He'll just like, but he'll, but it would be like two days later. That's the funny <laughs> thing. Like when you totally forget about it, he goes, "Hey, let me ask you a question. What do you mean I'm, you know, you a, a, a cool black dude? What do you mean by black? What? What?" What do I just like? What? Cause I'm black. I'm cool. What? And you're like sitting there just like the movie. Like you're like, nah, man. It's just you're just a cool guy, man. He goes, you know. And then it, it, that, and then it would just, it would just steamroll, dude. And there was no like, oh, I'm fucking with you, ha ha ha. It would, it would steamroll. He was one of those type of guys. Me, never happened. I'd be like, I mean, this is like, I would say, damn, Jack, you, you know, nigga, you crazy, you crazy, nigga. Now he would never. I never had an issue like, "What do you mean you calling me a nigger?" Because I mean, when this brown skin, it's like the Willy Wonka chocolate. It's like a liquid <laughs> gold, you know. I never had an issue with him, but if it was somebody else, it was just yeah, either would be fine, or two or a day later he would just come out of nowhere and like he beat the shit out of Vic Grimes all the time. He hated that motherfucker, and not because of the scaffold match that he had in XPW. It was because of that pay per view we did. And fucking Vic Grimes was stupid and didn't follow orders. And then, yeah. and then, and then he he said it was Jack's fault. What happened? And then it just steamed. It just, it just. And we'll to get shit. to that. We'll get to that a bit later. But um, I, I want to say this about Jack. Well, we interviewed him about mm, I don't know. Jack was like a month ago, five weeks about, ago. Yeah, about a month and a half ago. I want to say this, man. Like I, I feel like there's some CTE going on there. Like uh, I. I felt like when we were interviewing him, he was having a hard time, like remembering things and having stories to tell. Um, Or maybe we were just shit at interviewing him, but. uh... No, he has a little bit. And again, I'm not making, ever since um, Grimes fell on him and he like his ass hit him on the head and like, that's a true story, man. He, when you fall from that height and had that big old fat motherfucker with his ass land on your head and you hit the concrete, yeah. he was he, it fucked up his his I mean memory. Yeah, man. Last time I saw him, nothing bad. It's just like, you know, he was Jack was very boisterous. You know, like, hey man, what's up? You know, we're at a convention and he was just chill. He was just mellow. And I'm like, Jack, you cool? And he's like, Yeah, man, why? Like he was different, like mellow. Right. And I'm like, Nah, you're not. You're not talking. You're just, no, I'm fine, man. I'm cool. Like, it was like, it's, I don't know. It's different. Nothing yeah, bad. Just like, you expected something different. That's, that's it. Like, yeah, nothing bad. Just expected 
more out of him because you know you watch a lot of other interviews he does and he's fucking getting up out of his chair and he's fucking he's, carrying on with his story. Yeah, like when he does his kayfabe commentaries interviews with Sean Oliver, those interviews are fantastic. He's so engaging and stuff, but with us, it felt like it was. Uh, I don't know. Bit stop and start, but of it didn't uh, feel. It didn't feel like it was uh, intentional or on purpose, and that's the difference. No. You can tell when someone's not interested. Yeah, that's the thing, and we're asking every question onto the sun. You know what I mean? See, you should ask some questions like, "Hey, mate, is it true that black people love chicken?" <laughs> then, see, then you get then he like, oh, he, he get real fired up. Get, get on the fucking plane. He, <laughs> he's, your favorite, <laughs> he's your favorite jazz musician. You know, <laughs> you know. Is it true all black people have rhythm? <laughs> you look like an aborigine. Are you related to anybody down here? <laughs> I would never say that to him. You get a I can see his, You get the pause, you, can see, pause. you can see that eye twitch like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'll be you'd entertained. Be, you'd be at your front door in uh, two days, Carl. Oh, like, like, what do you mean yeah. by that? Uh, yeah, what you mean by that? I believe you. <laughs> so. Uh, so, how did you feel when Vito signed with WCW and left the uh, the Baldies? It was good for him, man. I mean, I mean, um, he was real tight with Vince Russo. I mean, I knew Vince Russo from back in the days as well when he first, not in the wrestling business, like really, really, really first started. He he made an appearance in Gleason's and um, and stuff, and uh, it he. It was way before Vince Russo, WWE, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, he did he a bit was, of training, right? Yeah. Yeah, he did some training there. I mean, not that long. Just I mean, It was a brief conversation with me and Vince Russo. Um, but that's how we got hooked up with my podcast, with um, Wrestling With Tragedy, and we're under the Vince Russo brand because we knew each other. But he yeah. didn't remember me. And, you know, it was just a brief conversation. Hey, how you doing? I'm Angel. Hey, how you doing? But he remembered the, the time of that time. But um, but when Vito left, it was good for him. It was something that, you know, I mean, they, but I think to be honest with you, the way Vito was dressed, the way the Baldies were going, that's how they, I think that's how they got the idea to do the Mama Luce because he stayed with the same character clothing because we yeah. were doing some type of mafioso type of characters at the time. Right. Right. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, we still don't really understand why PN News left ECW in that loser leaves uh, ECW match. Do you have any memory as to why he left too? Dude, I don't even remember any memory that it was a loser leaves town match. What match was that? Uh, it was a tag was match, tough. I think, against Axel and Balls. Uh, and um, it was loser leaves ECW match. And PN was in the tag team with Vito that night. And uh, after that, he was gone. But... I don't recall seeing him turn up in WCW or or anything like that. So That's I was just uh, we, we I, I interviewed Vito a few weeks ago and he didn't know at all. So oh, he didn't know. You don't remember? He didn't remember why PN also left. I really don't remember. I'm not gonna lie to you. I really don't remember. I just remember, you know, the Baldies, and then like little by little, he got phased out. Now. It's just difficult, but I just, I he just basically got phased out. I just never saw him again. Yeah. Um, that that's real hard because yeah, you're right. It, but I don't remember the loser leaves town match. I don't remember. I just remember he was gone. Sometimes yeah, it happened that way. You know that it, that it, I don't know. It just same with the Baldies. It was like you and Tony were the, the only mainstays, and there was a lot of people that came and went. Um, and that's and what, uh, that was the story. Yeah, Paul said Paul and Tommy was like, well, after Vito left, he's like, you guys are the main characters. You, you They could be interchanging Baldies, but you guys are all the main core okay. of the right. group. Yeah, okay. they did tell us that. Um, so what I wanted to talk about next was like Vic Grimes comes in during 2000 to fill the void of Vito and News leaving. Um, how do you shit. feel he fit in and what was he like as a person? You mean shit Grimes? Um that's what we used to always call him shit crap. To me, again, I get along with everybody. I like Vic Grimes. I just always gave him like shit because he was always easy to fuck with. Uh, DeVito, he liked him but didn't like him because he thought he was an idiot. You fucking moron. I always remember. <laughs> but uh, it's just they were always arguing. This footage of them wrestling, like we're wrestling, they, you can see if you go past the match and look on the apron, you see him arguing. 
literally in the background of the match. You see him like, rah, 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 rah. You're like you think, oh, look at the veto consulting Vic Grimes. No, he was yelling at fucking Vic Grimes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, because he was, he, like the Vito would say, he was a fucking moron. He's just stupid. <laughs> um, I liked him. He, it's just, I just love fucking with him. And um, like, uh, he just put himself, he was like one of those guys that didn't know he was getting himself in trouble because he was just that naive. You know, like that, he was just so innocent that his stupidity, and I hate sounding like I'm, I'm being mean about him, but he just didn't see the obvious. And that's why he had that heat with, 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 with um, New Jack, you know? Right. Like I said, I have no problems with him. I, you know, like, you know, he used to not like, he liked me, but didn't like me. Like I used to go, like when he used to take off his shirt, I go, holy fuck, man, look at those titties. <laughs> You know, or like like one time I, I have a pet peeve. I do not like to be bothered in the bathroom. So we were sharing a hotel room and he knocks on my door and he goes, hey, man, I got to go to the bathroom. Can you? And I'm shaving. I remember I was shaving, doing up my beard. And I'm like, dude, I'm busy. Let me finish. Bro, please, I got to pee. And I said, fine, just get inside. So I'm shaving and he's pissing. And I walk behind him with all the lather and I'll go, aren't you just supposed to be sitting down to do that? Little dick. <laughs> like shit like that. I used to hit him with stupid shit like that. Oh, uh, like one time he was getting a blowjob from a girl and I was in the back seat and I go, You call that hard? <laughs> like shit like that. I, like I used to fuck with him like that. Oh, or like one time incredible. like like one time we hooked up with this girl. Oh fuck it, she was hammered. She was drinking one of those motherfucking long necks. Just wasted. Fucking threw up in the car. Puking. Bleh just puking but she was hot but she was just trash and then she goes in the bathroom we're in the hotel room she goes in the bathroom in there for a while she wasn't throwing up think she was taking a shit <laughs> oh, God. And, and then she comes out and he's he fucks her Oh, fuck <laughs> he, he's chowing down on her he's fuck making yeah. out with her and I, and then when she leaves i go you disgusting bastard That's my and he boy. goes well and he goes, what do you mean? He goes, you know that bitch just took a shit. Also, she threw up, and you know she didn't wash her mouth. She so just like, all in there, just. <laughs> Good God, <laughs> fuck that hell. bastard, you nasty fuck. I expect like, that from Balls Mahoney. <laughs> oh, Balls Mahoney used to sit there and be talking to you and do this, mm-hmm. eat, and eat his own boogers while having a conversation. With <laughs> yeah, and Jack told twice. us about that and. He threw up because of it. <laughs> yeah, he'll just sit there and just eat his boogers, bro. But the best part about it, he'll pick it, roll it, look at it, look at it, <laughs> and just Fuck say it. and then bite it. And just you can see him savoring it. Oh. Yeah, man. And um, so anyway, and you're just <laughs> looking at him like this, this motherfucker just did like the three steps to the booger, <laughs> you know, like oh, wow, like rolling a joint, roll it, lick it. You know, like he was doing some steps to it. It was just funny. But, um, yeah, but yeah. That reminds me of a teacher I had in school. She was called Mrs. Pick, Roll, Flick. She would pick the nose, roll it, and then flick it. Is that actually her name? That's, that's what, that's her nickname. Oh. That's the, the kids um, gave her that name. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, the next question I had was, uh, you had several ECW world title matches with Mike Awesome, uh, on live events from what I read. Yeah. Um, did you matches. feel like Paul was investing in you to be a top guy in the future? Um, and how was Mike to work with back then? I love Mike, man. He was, DeVito didn't like him for some weird reason. I got to keep, I keep asking him, but I keep forgetting what he tells it sounds, me. It sounds like DeVito didn't like anyone. <laughs> DeVito, yeah, DeVito, there were certain people he clicked with. I mean, he clicked with a lot of people. It was just certain people. He just didn't click with Mike. He just, he was a dick. I said, what do you yeah. mean he was a dick? He was, I like Mike. He was cool. Um, wrestling in the ring, Mike was really cool. The wrestle in the ring with my only fear is that he uh, he never brought it up, but he never tried to throw me outside the ring. What he did with Tony, he had I have a I have a clip. We had me up like that to throw me outside the ring, but Devito comes in and pulls me down, and then we beat the brakes off him. But uh, I was like, I am not taking that fucking power bomb outside the ring. What he did because yeah, Tanaka, he yeah, he used to do that to Tanaka all the fucking time. And I'm like, shit. Did you know what? To be honest with you, in my heart, I didn't want to do it. If it was like, yo, we're going to do this, I'm like, fuck. All right, I'll do it. You know, what I have to do and what I feel were two different things. Yeah, of course. 
trust me, I, I was always bitching and not bitching like, oh, what? but I was like, oh, man. Wrestling really? like awesome would be fucking intimidating. He's a fucking machine. Yeah, no, he wasn't. It was, not a, it was not intimidating. I just didn't want to do it. Like when New Jack's music hits, that facial expression was like, oh, man, here it comes. Here comes the fucking <laughs> weapons. That was legit. That was legit. Like, because I didn't want to. I was like, oh, man, here it comes. Work, work, work. Crack. God damn it. That shit hurt. You know, like shit like this is all going in my mind. Oh, here comes a chair shot. Um, you know. Yep. Yeah. Oh. It was just how it is. I did, <laughs> did my you, job. Did you think that, like, because he was putting in these uh, matches with him, that maybe, like, he was grooming thinking about putting be... you, yeah, grooming you to be, like, uh, in, in a higher spot at, I, at I some know. point later on in time? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know what Paul, what faith Paul had in me. He knew I was not a... I was not a troublemaker, meaning I never did drugs. I never caused them problems. I never bitched. I never was passed out in the locker room. I was always like, yes, sir, anything you want, Paul. Um, you know, I was a soldier. That's what Johnny Raj used to do, you know, train us, you know, because if you look at it, I mean, if you look at the whole ECW, ECW the Gleason boys from the Tommy Dreamers, Taz, Devon, Matt Stryker, Prince Nana, nobody's ever, knock on wood, Died of a drug overdose. Yeah, you never heard anybody from Gleason's besides Tim Arson, and there's a couple guys who died. You know, Tim Arson hung himself, and but there's other guys who, you know, died of unnatural, you know, not natural causes, just died of heart attacks and stuff. I mean, yeah, that happens, but yeah, we, we never, none of us had any vices, right? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna get to the the thing that we spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. One of the more shocking moments to take place in EC House, ECW history was the Danbury incident with uh, New Jack of Big Grimes uh, with the scaffolding. Did you witness say, it? Say, and, say uh, that again. Say, say Danbury. Dan, Danbury? Okay. You had the, what's your accent? You're Danbury. Danbury, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I was just fucking with you. Yeah, it was Danbury, Connecticut. You witnessed it, and, and then and what was that scene like for you? That must have been fucking scary, man. Like, well, the true story. This is the true story. I was supposed to go off that scaffold. It was my. It was me. The really? reason why. Okay, yes, it was me. It was going to be me and Jack. Now, if you look at the footage, if you look underneath the the scaffold when they were standing, it was open. It was just an open scaffold. Yeah, and um. When originally I said, hey, guys, we need like a piece of plywood to put on top of that so we could have some stability because I was going to, you know, you know, like a floor. Yeah. So they were going to go to Staples, Home Depot, you know, like, a, uh, I don't know if you got a Staples or Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, they sell like, something similar. Yeah. Yeah, they would. You know, they sell wood and it's called hardwood. Bunnings. Yeah, it's hardwood shit. Yeah. So they say, hey, man, um, we didn't get a chance to get, uh, get a, um, a piece of wood, a giant piece of wood to put up there. So I look up and I'm like, I ain't doing it. I said, I, I need something. So Vic is like, I'll do it. And I look at him, what the fuck? And he goes, I'll do it. I said, good, you do it. Then you do it. I ain't doing it. Because I told DeVito, was like, I told DeVito, because DeVito doesn't remember. I'm like, DeVito, I am not doing it if it doesn't have a floor on it because I won't be able to take a suplex off there and stuff because you need footing. You need something, you know, you need something. So that's what happened. If it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't for me, meaning if I didn't say no, I would have been doing the spot. Yeah, but right. Vic Grimes wanted to do it. And my thing was, I didn't want the tables facing this way. I wanted two, ta I wanted two tables two tables each, four tables, two tables on top of each other. So when you get suplexes, it's going to go boom, boom. Yeah. No, Vic Grimes wanted to do one table spot, you know, the two table spot, but the two, you know, just two tables. I'm like, fuck that. I ain't doing it. And then, when, and then, well, and then supposedly, again, I wasn't up there, but Jack said he was afraid to go off. And then Vic said, oh, you pulled me off. And then when he when that happened, we were supposed to be getting all laid out, and and um, and Grimes didn't do that. He, he just stood up, and if you watch the video, he hits himself in the head, like punches him, oh, oh, you know. But no, the original idea was we're all supposed to be laid out. Jack, you know, Vic Grimes, the bald, he's just laid out. 
And wow. um, but then he did that, and then he dumbass goes in the back and says, uh, I, I can't remember the whole conversation, but basically he says, Well, it's Jack's fault. He pulled me off. You know, it's his fault. He didn't want to go off. So of course, telephone, telegram, tele wrestler. When he said that, they went to Jack and said, Hey, he's blaming you that you fucked up. That's why you got hurt. Basically. Not in yeah. those words, but that's just the, the gist of it. So Jack got pissed. And then he didn't go visit Jack. You know, say, Hey, you okay? You need anything? You all right? He was just Vic was just stupid. So then we're in um, the Burt Flickinger Center in Buffalo, New York, because Jack was gone for a long time. And then finally Jack makes an appearance for that show. And then there's a tape on that. And um, well, so what happened was, so I'm sitting in the locker room once again, just like I'm sitting just like here. And right behind me is a locker. And the other side was another locker. And Vic was sitting on the other side. So I'm sitting there and I didn't know Jack was going to be there. And then all of a sudden Jack walks into the locker room and just walks right in and I go, hey, what's up, Jack? He didn't say nothing to me. He just walks by me and just slaps the shit out of Vic. I mean, you just heard it like it was like a like a, crack, like a firecracker. Blah! And all I hear is, what the fuck, Jack? What the fuck? And then I like leaned over, like, like just like I'm doing now, to look around the corner. And then I see Vic and New Jack face to face. And Jack said, I'm a fool. You know, like, I can't remember what he said. I don't want to say, I'll kill you or whatever. They were just arguing. So then um, Jack was sitting. I think I was sitting there because Jack was putting, he had the guitar and he put a, a bowling pin, a mallet. He was filling the guitar up with shit and he was taping it. And he's just literally, he's going to fucking kill this motherfucker. I'm going to fucking destroy him. So then, um, I go outside and I can't remember the whole thing, but I remember I spoke to Paul, nothing, he just like, and Paul said, Hey, um, we heard what happened with Vic in the locker room. Um, Angel, this is what's going to happen. When Jack's music hits, Vic's going to powder. He's going to leave the ring. You'll take the chair. You'll take the guitar shot and you get pinned. Oh shit. So I go, okay, no problem boss. Anything you want. So I go back to Jack. Hey Jack, things changed. Um, you're not going to hit Vic with the guitar. You're going to hit me with the guitar instead. Your music's going to hit. Vic's going to powder. And he just got pissed. Mom, no, fuck that. And he went outside and spoke to Paul and they were arguing. They were arguing and, um, and he goes, no, once your music hits, he's going to powder. So then Jack comes back to me and he's like cursing him. And he's like, man, fuck this and this motherfucker. And did it. And I say, yeah. And he goes, uh, and I said, oh, okay. Uh, hey, Jack. And he's cursing up a stone. Motherfucker this and motherfucker that. Yeah, that's great, Jack. Um, uh, but, and he just kept interrupting me. I never got a word in twice. But finally at the end, I said, hey, Jack, that's all great. But can you do me a favor? And he goes, what, man? Can you take all that shit out of the guitar because I'm taking the chair shot, <laughs> the guitar shot? He goes, "Yeah, I got you, I got you." And then, but if you look, if you look at the footage, if you ever get a chance to watch that and me taking that guitar shot, you can yeah. see the tape. You can still see the tape wrapped around all it. Right, okay. And it never gave. He didn't hurt me, but since it had tape on it and he hit me, it was like, "Bam!" Oh fuck! Oh, it shit. was hard. You know, and I took the oh, bump. I mean, it, it still didn't hurt, but it was solid. And I was like, and he pinned me, and he was still pissed, man. He was like, but after that, they never, they never cross paths. They right. it was always like, they never cross paths. Paul refused to have Vic and Jack in the ring, so Jack held a grudge against that. And of course, as as time went on, XPW, Led to the XPW, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we're cool, we're cool. No, we're cool. That's what Jack was like saying. Like, yeah, we're cool, man. Water under the bridge. Let's have a good match, and then you're the rest of history. Yeah. He's trying to kill the motherfucker, yeah. I want to do it. Over to you, Jack. So when we uh, spoke to New Jack a couple months ago, he said uh, that that entire Danbury situation changed him as a person. He was never the same. Uh, Did you notice New Jack was different as a person when he came back? No, I think it was more of um, as the years gone by. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was fine here. I th- it's just like, yeah, it's just like, I'm saying he has Alzheimer's. I'm not saying that. Nah. But, you know, a person with Alzheimer's first gets it, and then as the years go by, it gets worse and worse and worse. I think that's just probably what it is, is that as time went on, his memory's getting, you know, whatever. You know, he's just mellow, man. He's just like, I'm sending you, I know Jack for years. Uh, he's just not bad. It's just like, hey, man, you okay? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, it's different. It's a different person. His personality's different. 
you know, nothing negative. It's just, he's just quiet. It's just, yeah. I don't expect that. You know, it's like one of your mates, you use the word mates. If your mates all the like party guy and drinking and, and, and women, and all of a sudden he goes in a car crash and then all of a sudden you're like, hey man, and you know who he is, but then he's different. You're gonna be like, man, you okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, man, it's different. Right. That's all. You know, he got fucked up, man. It fucked him up. Vic, Vic That's not my boogers. I had a nail. <laughs> no balls behind any shit around here. No, no. <laughs> so Vic is still there after the incident took place, uh, but he did leave ECW during 2000. Uh, was it related to the incident? Shit, you know what? I can't remember why. I mean, shit, I would be leaving ECW. You know what? You know, no, you know what? I remember that v again every time i talked to devito it was different it's just funny but i just know that when we spoke to vic like vic just it's just like the pn news thing he just never came back and then i spoke to vic he goes i just never got booked man i never had a flight they they kind of let him they kind of let him uh like like if your boss doesn't call you in for work and you're like i haven't heard from the boss and they never fire you but you never hear from them but you keep calling him and he never picks up. You kind of yeah. got phased out. Basically, that's what it was. Because when I went to DeVito, see, DeVito is, I'm more, DeVito's funny. Like, if I went to DeVito, hey, DeVito, man, um, yeah, they're not flying Vic back. He said that um, he, he never got a plane ticket and they just never mentioned anything to him about if he's fired or not. And DeVito, DeVito will go, fuck him. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, that's how DeVito was. Fuck the motherfucker. That's how DeVito was. He was just like, you have a conversation with him. Hey, man, I think um, they're not bringing back PN News. I think, I don't know what's going on, but Paul said that he's not coming back. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> with the baldies. Fuck him. <laughs> so, I mean, like, that's DeVito. Like, okay. All right. You know, you know, that's just how it was. I did, I just remember Vic telling me like, yo man, um, I haven't got, they never sent me a plane ticket, you know? And I was like, oh. Right. And Ooh. I didn't know. I just never knew, you know, like it was just like, oh, okay. Cause I'm not in charge of the plane tickets. I was like, hey, you need to talk to Debbie or something. You know, Debbie was the lady who was in charge of, of the plane tickets. So, you know, so that's, I just didn't know. So he got phased out. Yeah. You know? Um, was it difficult having members come and go uh, the way they were when you were trying to establish the stable? No, it was just because remember they had the conversation with us that everybody was interchangeable. Yeah, you know we we the main thing, so we kind of knew, but I was just didn't think they were gonna let Vic go. I think he just had a lot of heat, and he was and technically he was kind of on loan from WWE because he was uh. still. I think he was still getting paid by WWE. Yep. And because he was the, as the character Kilo. Yeah, he was he, supposed to be like with um, Droz and Prince Albert, and he was only there a couple of weeks, and then he disappeared. Yeah, he was still on loan, and I think he was getting his paycheck from WWE, and I think that's kind of like, I think that's why he got phased out. No, I think the the New Jack thing and maybe getting not released from WWE kind of like complemented each other, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, it must have been it. <laughs> but anyway, what, uh, what's your question? Uh, the question was um, Red Dog, a.k.a. Rodney Mack, joins the group yeah, cool, soon dude. after. Um, how did you feel he fit in and what was he like to work with? Well, he didn't really join the group because it was never really um, done. And we only had those two promos that we did that it was leading to a new member of the Baldies. Oh, okay. And I'm not there yet yeah, with he, my uh, chronological viewing of 2000. Yeah. Yeah. If you watch the matches, there was two, one at a bar. Um, I do have a video of that. I don't know how to find it, but uh, somebody sent it to me. I forgot where. And um, it was Baldies and we go into a bar and DeVito tips over the guy in the wheelchair. And then Rodney Mack, uh, Red Dog was the bar, the bouncer of the bar. And then he's like, you guys need to leave and yada, yada, yada. And then um, after that, um, then w there was another episode where we did a, like a segment basically was like, 
it was like it cut at the part where we're about to we're about to clash and then he you know you know red dog grabs the camera no witnesses and he throws it out and closes the door so it was more of a cliffhanger type of thing right so um yeah so he was never was, like fully indoctrined into the no we never we never been we never tagged we never did anything in the ring but it was going to lead to that moment and that never that never happened a uh, quick sidebar i wanted to ask you if you ever had an issue getting paid by paul that's a super question <laughs> yeah man our check was bouncing like a motherfucker he um he um yeah when the the, the company was having trouble he was he was not paying the boys man people were getting upset because he was paying certain people, which again, no, no fault to them. He was just paying them like Rob Van Dam. When we had to do a pay-per-view, he was holding the thing. He was holding, um, he was holding like RVD is like, I'm not going to wrestle. If I don't get my money, I am not performing. And, um, so he, he had to pay him. So he paid him. Yeah, but that's not cool, you know. But like in my heart, I'm like, what? What the fuck, man? What about us? What about Raven? You know, <laughs> I mean, what about our yeah. money? You know. But I understand it's RVD, no ill will. It's just that we're just kind of like, man, dude, come on, we bust our ass too, you know. What's the deal, Leo? But it just, how did he sell it to you? Was he kind of like, uh, I swear in my father's eyes that this check will not bounce. Yeah, what the story, what happened was we had to go, we literally had to go to Paul's, Paul's bank. So we didn't want to go to our bank and cash a check because we were afraid. Because if you, if a check bounces in your bank, you get, you get dinged. But if you go to the guy's bank, then he, he gets dinged if it bounces. So we had to drive all the way to, um, to Paul Heyman's bank to cash it. <laughs> because we didn't want to get oh, excuse me. we didn't want to get dinged. And I'm sorry for yawning, but I've been up since uh, early in the morning. So that's fine. Bro. Show. It's okay. oh, that must be boring. <laughs> that's it. So basically that's just how it panned out. I see. Um you and Tony become more of a tag team once the New Jack story concludes. Uh, how did you feel about that switch? It was awesome, man. We were going to be groomed for be the next tag champions. We were supposed to win it from Dan. True story. We were supposed to win it from Danny Dorian and Roadkill, because at one of the pay per views, we were going to, we were going to fight uh, Chris Candido, or Chris Candido, um, Steve Carino, and um, Just Incredible because they were going to be the new impact players. So if you watch one of the pay-per-views, we, you see us, we did a run out where we just started brawling with them to the back. Yeah. So that's, that's just basically what, what happened. We were supposed to win the tag titles story was, and then we were going to lose it to the new impact players of Steve Curry. No. Uh, oh yeah. I, um, just, uh, just incredible. Just incredible. Okay, fair enough. Um, Jack, you're back. I am back. It's, uh, it's up to your uh, your section of questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any more New Jack stories you might be able to share with us? No, I mean he was a funny dude. Um, funny how. Um, I never hung out with Jack that much besides a couple of moments in the bar or, you know, but, um, cause again, remember, like I said, I just never knew how he was going to react to certain things. So I just didn't want to like, yeah, ruffle his feathers sometimes, you know what I mean? And again, I'm not saying that would have happened. It's just when, you know, I was like, oh, but you know, I never really had too many funny stories with Jack. Um, the only time I ever had a funny story is when I was hanging out with Jack and we went to the mall we went into Walgreens, which is like a pharmacy, like a, you know, like a, it's a pharmacy, but they sell other products there, but it's just a pharmacy building. Like, I don't know what you guys have, 
But, um, and the lady came up to him. It was funny. And she goes, excuse me, sir, do you know where I could find the black hair products? And he, he like looked at her and took his hat off. Bitch, do I look like I use black hair product? Because, you know, Jack is bald. Yeah. And, and he just fucking started ripping into it. And I just started laughing. <laughs> and he looked at me. Can you believe this motherfucker? You fucking ask me if I need, you know how to use black hair products? And I just die and laugh and die and laugh. <laughs> that's it. That's the, that's the most. That's a good one, though. Yeah, that's the most funniest story I ever had with Jack. You know. When did you first start seeing uh, signs that ECW was having uh, some problems? When those checks started bouncing like a motherfucker. Oh, you yeah. know? But uh, no, I mean, it was, just, it was just when we weren't getting paid, when we started noticing, when we started noticing that we were like lo- losing, like we weren't getting paid. We just like got that vibe. And then Paul's like, no, everything's fine. Everything's okay, and all this good shit. It's just, it's you just knew, like, man, this mother. You just like, man, are you fuck? You know what I mean? You don't have that gut feeling, but you was just thinking, maybe, maybe it's gonna be okay. Maybe you know, maybe he's right. You was just trying to give him that, you know, just being hopeful, you know. But nope. No, it was not to be. <laughs> and uh, be. and uh, then everyone was uh, shocked, as we said at the start of the interview on that uh, that Monday. Yeah, that Monday evening on Raw. Um, yeah, you have any, you just, what? on a more positive note, do you have any more final crazy road stories? Mm, I mean, no, not really. I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of things were just funny moments and good, good. I mean, the locker room was always a bunch of great guys. I love them all. I mean, Francine. Um, you know, DeVito, you know, Chris Chetty, Danny Dorian. I mean, it, the, the list goes on and on. And we were a family. C.W. Anderson, great guy. Love him to death. Um, we were just a family, man. And we just cared about each other. And when we got into a fight, we all got into a fight. You know what I mean? And like if, a, if a, something happened in a bar, we just yeah. always had each other's back. Um, a lot of rat stories. I mean, just a lot of orgies. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we used to, I used to get, have my hotel room on the other side of the room. Like if I was at the Holiday Inn and they were on the second floor, I always stayed on the fourth floor on the other side of the, the hallway. Because, you know, once that, you know, once that party happens, you know, that's going to end up in your room. You yeah. Know? So I always try to stay. I always made an appearance, but I knew that I said I need to stay as far as possible because I knew that if I stayed as far as possible, they wouldn't be... <clears throat> Hmm. come into my room and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, like I said, it's just tons and tons of fucking classic stories. It's just, I don't want to put anybody on blast, you know? No, oh, no, no. Full disclosure, of course. Um, Carl, back to you. Um, take us through what it's like taking a chair shot from Balls Mahoney. He hated giving me chair shots because I used to do like, I used to like, cause I didn't, I, I didn't say I didn't trust Balls. It's just, he fucking whacked you, man. I mean, he literally fucking like, I mean, he took care of the chair so you won't get hurt, but it still hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and it just depends on what, like if I look at him and I'm like, okay, he's there. Is he, was he doing drugs before the match? You know, stuff like that. I mean, it was just a different, um, you know, like his, just to see his mindset and his attitude. If I was able to see... <laughs> If he was all there, I'd be like, okay, you know, but I still kind of like protect myself, you know, he yeah. hated getting me to just because I didn't take it the way he wanted to take it, wanted <laughs> me to take it. Okay. Um, what was your weirdest experience with a fan? Hmm. I think, um, weirdest experience. Um, uh, I mean, there's, I mean, there was a girl called Leatherface where um, she had the hugest boobs. She had like, like she was a goth chick. She dressed goth and um, she was like, makeup black, everything black. But she had the biggest tits. And she used to love to show us her tits. So she used to come on nowhere and just show her tits, but they were just so huge. I've seen many tits in my life, but when you look at these, you're like, holy shit. 
and the, and she was not fat. She was like skin, not, not skinny, but the tits and the body was like not the same. You know what I mean? Like you're like yeah. holy shit, that's a lot of titties for a woman. But um, out of yeah, proportion. I mean, <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. She yeah. She loved the face. Was a very intriguing person. She used to make appearances in a lot of the shows and stuff. And uh, she was just, she had this fucked up tooth. She had a cracked tooth. So when she sucked your dick, she used to like leave a red, like she used to grate, like a cheese grater, like leave a line of fucking raw meat. Because <laughs> <laughs> she used to, sc- and that was my fault. Because I was like, oh, maybe she had an off day. Maybe she had too much to drink. Maybe today is a better day. <laughs> and then she, sc- <laughs> she, she, she fucking did a groove. I look like a red skunk. It's just like a fucking a red groove, a fucking line. Man, oh, she God. fucked it up, bro. It's like taking oh, a yeah. fine razor blade and just taking it right on the top of your dick and just back and forth, back and forth. Oh, oh, she sounds like my fuck. woman. I... <laughs> yeah, then my oh. dumb ass like, ah, oh, maybe, yeah, everybody has a bad day. Oh. <laughs> then, I did, then I did it again like a dumb fuck. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know yeah. I see I Jack. Know, um, Heat Wave 2000, the XPW incident. Uh, what do you remember of it? I don't remember nothing because I didn't. No, you know what's fucked up? The reason I said I don't remember nothing because I was too busy talking to Conan and because um, Conan was there. And and then I don't know what I was doing. And DeVito comes back and he goes, what the fuck were you? What the fuck are you talking Aww. about? And he goes, fucking XPW guys fucking tried to grab Francine. So we all went out there and kicked their ass and we took it out to the parking lot. And I'm just like blinking like I didn't hear nothing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you hear rump like crazy yeah. shit. Nothing. I was like, I missed it. He goes, yeah, motherfucker. I'm like, I missed it, dude. I was, I was talking to Conan. Yeah. I didn't know it happened. It was just like, everybody came out there. Yeah. We beat the shit out of him. I was like, God damn it. Damn. Uh, We have heard, we have heard a funny story from uh, Big Sal, man. He just told us his side of the story. Everyone's just fucking, I'm sure you've heard all the fucking stories. Fucking New Jack hooting and hollering with his fucking crutches and shit. (laughs) Yeah, man. Sal went out there. I mean, yeah, he, everybody was out there besides me. If you look at the footage, there's no kingpin. He was not there. (laughs) Uh, Were you in Pine Bluff at the last ECW event? Nope. Why? Because, true story, because we weren't getting paid and I wasn't making a stand or anything. I just couldn't afford it. I didn't have the money. So I, re- I could close my eyes and remember the conversation. Hey, Ainge, you going to come? Are you coming uh, this week? And I said, I don't, I don't know, dude. I, I can't afford it. And I called DeVito. DeVito, what do you want to do? And DeVito's like, Ainge, I don't have the money. I can't drive all the way down there. And, uh, you know, so we're like, Okay, when you, we're not going. We're not gonna go this. We're not gonna go this time. We're going the next time. No, and I just can't go. We did. did nobody. Did, we didn't know no, it was the yeah. last show. No, no, we, we did not know it was the last show. We did not know. We just thought it was a regular show. We just didn't go because we just couldn't afford it. And then they. That's when later it was like that. They was like, oh, we don't know when the next show is. We don't know when the next show is. We don't know when the next show is. Yo, did you hear the BCW folded like that? So I, it's not that I didn't want to go. I just didn't have the money. And of course, Ivan shows up at Raw, as said before, and then the rest is history. Plus I, was, plus, I was married at the time. And, you know, I mean, are you guys married? No. Uh, no way. Okay, no, regardless no. of the fact. No, but regardless of the fact, you know when your woman's bitching. <laughs> you're going to go down there. And, you know, like, bitching, bitching, bitching. So and, like, oh, and I was just like, I couldn't do it. I just yeah. couldn't go. So I would love, you know, but you know what? If you're going to ask me, do I regret not going? Yes, I do. If yeah. I knew it was the last show, I would have went. I would have sucked it up and went. But it, it kind of like, fuck. Finally, I made a stand. I took a stand. I, I made a stand because I was always like, remember, I always, you know, all the stories I'm telling you, no problem, boss. Anything you want, I'm down. You know, no matter how I feel, I did my job. So the first time in my fucking career in ECW, I took a stand. I said, no, I am not going. Yeah. I can't afford it. And then I'm like, God damn it. I should have went. The one Seriously. time. It's, it's, it's always the one time uh, that you miss something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what happened. We just couldn't afford it. 
And if I and, and I knew if even if I would have went, I don't think Devito would have went. Yeah, you know, like shit like that. It would it would have been a singles match or something. You know, I just didn't. He just was not passionate. He just didn't want to go. He just didn't feel this. He, he was the same with me. And I said, Devito, if you don't go, I don't go. You know, like shit like that. No, I still think it's unfair that you guys never really uh, like ECW. Never got the proper farewell show or um, last pay per view. Anything. It could have been funded by Vince for all for all we care. Well, Vince didn't care about ECW. He wanted to bury ECW. I mean, when yeah. the ECW first came back in WWE, Tommy called me and he said, "I gave Paul, I gave Vince the list of people that he wanted. You know that I think would make great with ECW." And then I, I, like I said, I remember it like it was yesterday. The contract was $750 a week. Plus he wanted you to be suited and booted. And um, you know what suited and booted is, right? To, uh, suited, suited and off. booted. You know, yeah. Dressed up, nice, sharp, yeah. suited and booted. So, so think about it. You're on the road. Yeah. Paying for hotel, rental car. She, he wants you to dress nice all the time. You're only yep. making seven hundred and fifty dollars a week. No, no, nah. nah. not doing it. Not the travel. It, not it's not. Work. It's not. You're not making any money. So I'm spending I, so much money. Yeah. So Tommy said, "I gave Paul. I mean, I gave Paul. I gave Vince the list of people that I think will fit with the ECW thing. You know, so you're on the list. So when I spoke to Devito, I said, Devito, and just like I was telling you, I can't." 750 I can't do it man I can't quit my job because I had a job job yeah I said I can't quit my job for that shit I said even if I wanted to go to WWE I just can't I, I can't afford it you know and he's like yeah you're right man I'm not gonna do it and I said I'm not gonna do it they never called me to say hey we're gonna offer you the job thank god they did it but it, if they did I would have said no now yeah before the EC no yeah before the ECW thing happened I was in Puerto Rico and of course this is before text messaging and all this bullshit now you know the uh, Tommy was looking for me and Devon was looking for me I, I think after I left Puerto Rico I was kind of burnt out I said I'm done and I left and I didn't fall off the grid but I was just like I need a break so of course you know now it's easy to get a hold of anybody Facebook and all this shit but back then I just fell off the map yeah. and they didn't know where I went but I came here in, to Kansas and they were looking for me and they were looking for me and they were looking for me because they wanted me to do, they were looking for a guy to be the bodyguard. Once again, the bodyguard for the Prince Nassim Hamed character, the Davari, you know, remember before September 11th? No, no, yeah. it was, it was, yeah, it was before September 11th after I left. It was right. Yeah. Because they killed their character because of the September 11th thing. Cause they kind of phased that out. But they wanted me, and that's they wanted me to be his bodyguard. So I had a, was supposed to grow a beard, wear a turban, just like Davari. And then of course he left, and the Davari did his thing. Oh, the um, Muhammad oh. Muhammad Hassan. Um, thank you, Muhammad Hassan. Thank you. And that was with the uh, it wasn't September 11th. It was with the uh, London London bombings. London bombings. That's right. Because I you sure? Yeah, because Muhammad Hassan. It was the London like, bombings, and then like the next week uh, it aired on SmackDown. Him doing like a. Attack very similar to Devari just disappeared after that as well, which is it's just it's fucking. I I completely understand why, because you know they were working for their sponsorships and you know all this their investors and stuff like that. But it's just fuck, man. Muhammad Hassan was he was awesome. He drew such amazing hate, but it is what it is. In the world is. I just thought it was a September 11th gig that kind of like because I remember like it was because because I remember. um, because I left, I left Puerto Rico, and I always remember September seventeenth of two thousand one. September eleventh happened a week before. I ended up in there, so September eleventh already happened, and they were looking for me after the fact. Yeah, I remember so, the Muhammad Hassan thing was because of a bombing that happened in London, and they did like a uh, uh, segment on SmackDown where they attacked the Undertaker, and um, they had used i don't know what they used but they used something to choke him and they had um all these kind of terrorist looking people helping him out so um that's all i remember from it it's pretty brutal yeah never seen um, 
I'm just trying to look online to see what they said, but it basically they said the incident made the New York Post a fact that was reiterated during Hassan's promo the following week that would air on WWE due to this, which I don't know what he said. The, the network SmackDown aired on the UPN decided to remove Muhammad Hassan from television immediately. So you probably, I don't know. They couldn't even like repackage him or anything, man. Like they just never saw him again. Cause, yeah, because he was just, a, you're right. London bombing took place, but what year was that? 2005. It'd be like four or five, five. or six. 2005. <laughs> okay, I, I was watching it on TV when I was a kid, man. Yes, uh, and then probably that was, and you're right. Maybe then you know when they were looking for me, I was already. It was already after. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're right. London bombing. That's what it says. But not only everything on the internet is real. It's true. Remember that. <laughs> well, okay. True. Anyway, you're saying. I guess, Jack, uh, like uh, the question about any interest from WWE is uh, cancelled now. Now we know that there was. Um, mm-hmm. And you go. But no yeah, one would I take mean, that fucking paycheck. I wouldn't take that paycheck from WWE. No, I wouldn't. I mean, it was just not, dude, it was not feasible, man. It was just, it just, it's just horrible. You know, it's just one of those things where you're like, man, I can't do it. No matter if your heart wanted to do it, you just got to look at it from the, from the from the money aspect, you're like, there's no money. I can do this. I can't justify it. Doesn't make sense. It's their demands. Uh, they don't cover your health or anything, from what I'm aware of. And on top of that, seven fifty bucks a week. You're what? Well, you're going to be spending half of that money just on travel, let alone travel. food and food, food hotel. And yep, hotel. Yeah, hotel. Crazy man. Fucking insane. Um, I think that's over to you, Carl. Um, so you end up semi-retiring, I suppose, at this point. Uh, you become a police officer. Um, so what that? led to you mm-hmm. choosing life in law enforcement? Because I needed a job. I'm not going to lie. It's not that I went semi-retirement. It's because, like I said, September 11th happened. There was no work. Yeah. Nothing. Nada. I had to make a decision. I had to put, I had to put food in my mouth. This is before my daughter and everything else. I was just like, I need to make money. So I decided to do become a police officer. So I'm not retired. Like right now, remember rule number one, pro wrestlers don't retire. Of course. Because, you know, everybody, they always come back or that's why I never say I'm retired. I just I was like, I don't want to do it. I'm just not feeling it. You know, yeah. like right now I'm focusing on my podcast, um, trying to do another, because I'm 48 years old. I can't see myself do like a hack. I'm not making fun of them, but I'm saying like Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Ric Flair in my late sixties doing professional wrestling. So I have to use my popularity and the respect that I have from my fans to venture into other avenues of entertainment. Yep. So. Um, So I don't know if you were still clued in with what WWE was doing uh, after ECW ended, but uh, we always ask everyone this, like how much do you feel like they fucked up that invasion angle and what would have you done differently? Well, supposedly the original version is that Shane was supposed to take over WCW, which you did see the angle like, hey, dad, I'm the owner. You know, remember that skit? Yeah. Well, the story was it's supposed to be that the invasion angle was was going to happen in the WCW and then ECW was going to take over WCW and that was going to become the new ECW under Shane McMahon's banner. Right. But apparently, but apparently that went, I don't even know why it didn't go, it didn't happen. So... A lot of people blame the Buff Bagwell and Booker T match, which I think is stupid. But uh, I mean, uh, well, I can't remember that one. You mean the Buff Bagwell when he had his mom call and say, "Hey, um, did that type of shit?" Or they had a match in Tacoma, Washington, um, and it, the match didn't go down well. When the next week they were going to be in Atlanta, that would have been the right time to do the first WCW match on Raw, but. They didn't do that. And uh, after that happened, they totally cancelled out the idea of relaunching WCW um, as a separate oh. entity. Gotcha. Um, oh. so, so what did you think of ECW One Night Stand? It was good. I, that was right before they decided to bring it back. Mm. A yeah. year before. But, um, you know, for me, like, it felt like it was still authentic. It, it had the same feel. One night stand 05 did for sure. That is true. But the story was is that Vince look if it ain't Vince's idea, he wants to kill it. Because if you look at it, the story was after me and DeVito 
well, we were never offered the position, but we were happy we were not offered the position. The story was is that he was using all the ECW guys to put over his guys, like the yeah. CM Punks and the um, not Brian Knobs, um, what's his name? Uh, JB Noble, no, um, Mike Knox, oh. thanks. Ooh. All right, yeah. Mike Knox and all them put them over and phase out the ECW guys. And then, you know, and that's what we heard. I mean, we heard it from many people. And I'm like, fuck that. Think about it. Being in WWE and then just have to put somebody over, not no ego, but they don't want to use you. So they want to, they want to bury you. Yeah. Basically Vince wanted to kill ECW, but he knew he couldn't kill ECW because, because it's a legend. Absolutely. And you, you see the way that they use people like C.W. Anderson and uh, Danny Doring and didn't oh, do mean, shit all with them, you know, nothing with them. You mean Chris Anderson? Uh, 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 that's what they're calling him. Oh, C- Christopher W. Anderson was the there name. You go. Because, because CM Punk and C.W. Anderson was too confusing, apparently. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> No, it's not, for me. it's not for me. I know that they're two different people just because they have like a, an initial at the beginning. Anyway, um, back to you, Jack. Ended up working in XPW for a short stint in 2003. Uh, what was XPW like to work for? And do you have any stories from your time in working there? I've heard it was uh, pretty interesting. It wasn't me. That was the wrong angel. That was that gay guy angel. The one yeah, that the hardcore think- homo. The hardcore homo, they, you know, a lot of people ask me like, hey, you was in East? No, the wrong angel. But they made it seem it was me. And I'm like, oh, I said, I ain't no hardcore homo. So. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, um, there's a, an account on uh, cagematch.net, which uh, posts like results and matches that people had and said that you had tag team with Shark Boy on no. the several Jesus. So that was the other angel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't me. Fuck you, know. internet. Okay, you, you yeah. fucked this over. <laughs> yeah, I told you everything on the internet is not uh, true. Damn. I'll, I'll, I'll email Cage that. Match. I'll email that website to make sure they take it down because it's. Yeah, somebody else asked me that one time, and I'm like, no, buddy, it wasn't me. You know, and they said, oh shit, it was the hardcore homo guy. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't never know. worked for XPW. Okay. Nah, I mean, can't really blame you. Eh? Uh, DeBold is reunited for the first time in eight years at the Legends of the Arena reunion show against Balls and Axel. Uh, what was that day like? And did you feel like it was a good way to tie up your team with Tony? Well, yeah, it was, it was good to see everybody. I was really stoked to do the show, but I was fat as fuck. Uh, Balls Mahoney was losing his teeth. Um, you know, I was not in the greatest shape because, you know, once you get, I got like not depressed, you know, it's not like, oh, but I just got fat. I just started eating like instead of one fucking uh, foot long, it was two, you know, two fucking subway foot <laughs> for yeah. So I got really fat. I was pushing like almost 380 pounds. Damn. Yeah. And then I, now I'm like, two, yeah, I'm trying to do, yeah, I'm down to 265 after all these years. But I, I try to keep myself fit. I try to at least look presentable. What really got me go, really got me like into to get into some type of some shape, is how I was doing a convention, and a fan came and said, "Hey, uh, I'm here to get an autograph from Angel." And then my fat ass is like, "Well, I'm Angel," and he's like, "Oh," and that's like, oh, really? That's yeah. when it clicked because I didn't. I mean, I looked the same, but I was fatter. So he yep. had the image of the baldies with the glasses and stuff. And I was just a fat piece of shit. So that kind of like, wow. So you just want to at least look, you want to at least look presentable like a Ricky Steamboat. You see how Ricky Steamboat looks awesome now? Yeah. He looks great, man. He looks fit. So you just want to at least look fit somewhat. Hmm. Um, so like you end up, uh, we haven't got many more questions, uh, bro. Um, just so you know. Um, but you end up beginning to wrestle more from 2010 up until 2018 from what my research tells me, which has obviously not been working out so well so far tonight. Yeah. But, um, what, what made you want to get into, back into the ring more often? Because the business was getting better and I just, um, and, and I was getting paid very well. I was getting paid very handsomely. So, you know, you don't leave money on the table. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, our research also tells us that the last place you wrestled at was at 
Kansas City Extreme Wrestling uh, in 2018. Mm. Might have been your last time that you wrestled. Maybe I'm wrong. Have you officially retired? And if not, what would be your ideal last match? Wrestlers don't retire. Remember I said that? Uh, <laughs> is there such a thing as retirement in pro wrestling? I, dude, you know what? Um, it, my deal match. Uh, you know, I would love to wrestle C.W. Anderson because I never wrestled them before. But he says he's retired, but I doubt that. But um, but uh, cause yeah, cause we never wrestled against each other, and I love C.W. I would love to wrestle Devon. We never wrestled each other because, you know, I just want to show him who is the best man because, you know, I have the skills. And um, I always told him that. I always joke with him, like, you know, you don't want none of this in the ring, buddy. You know, you never face the Baldies. You know, and he, <laughs> yeah. ha, 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 very funny. You know, we just rip each other. I would love to, I would love to wrestle Devon or, and I was going to wrestle Devon when I was going to do the Canada show, uh, uh, Hardcore Road Trip, but it, the money that, the promoter was kind of shady and Devon didn't feel comfortable going. So I would have been the first time I would have wrestled Devon, but it just never right. came. So, but um, yeah, I mean, those are the people of the ideal people I would, would I want to wrestle. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and before we get to a little segment called Five Second Frenzy, um, do you have any regrets of your time in the wrestling business? No, not really. I mean, I wish I would have not left Puerto Rico and I would have stuck it out a little bit better. And um, There's a lot of decisions you make in life that you can't say you regret because I wouldn't have had a daughter and all this stuff. Um, things happen for a reason. Um, so if I would have went the other route, maybe I would have not had my kids. So I have to look at it like that. It's a blessing. Right. Yeah. So it's a kind of like a double whammy like yeah i know i do regret but i don't regret mm -hmm. you know but it you know i'm i'm still i'm still out there you know and people still remember me and and i keep my name relevant with like i said my podcast and stuff like that so yeah you know and getting to that i wanted you to have the opportunity to plug your podcast and what it's all about to anyone out there and um then we'll get to this little segment Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, I do a show called Wrestling with Tragedy with uh, my co-host Pierce Austin and Kevin Rodriguez. We talk about uh, the, the the tragedies in pro wrestling. Um, we talk about the Chris Benoit's, the, the the Gino Hernandez, the Von Erichs, and we we just dig deep into those type of topics because we, you know we're former law enforcement, so we look at it from an investigative point of view and try to peel back the layers to get to the truth or what we think is the truth almost like a um just almost like an unsolved mysteries for pro wrestling we yeah. just try to dig deep and uh, we just have you know we we trying to do something different because the thing about podcasts right now is always like hey angel thanks for being on our show yada yada, yada which is nothing wrong but you don't want to offend me and you don't want to ask me things that might offend me yeah. you know because you don't want it to get heat me, I don't give two shits and two fucks about anything. I have two fucks to give. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just don't give a fuck. And I'm not, I'm not scared to hurt anybody's feelings in the business because A, philosophy number one, if you didn't want your business out there, then you shouldn't have put it out there for the media to, to just like the, the Tammy Sitch, the Sunny incidents and all yeah. this crazy shit that these people do. And then they get upset because we investigate and, and you know, and dig deep into it and go, I can't believe you did that, which it hasn't happened yet. But hey, then you should not have put your business out there. Yeah. So we, and that's how we do. And, uh, you know, we're on Instagram, um, you know, Wrestling with Tragedy. We're also on Facebook, Wrestling with Tragedy. And we're under the Vis Russo Network, you know, um, under his banner. And, uh, we, you know, we're just having a lot of opportunities. And again, with these two guys that by my side, Kevin and Pierce, you know, we're just having a great time. And it's the best partners I've ever had in, in podcasting. Awesome. Uh, that's good, bro. That's awesome. Um, and I, I watched uh, I watched the uh, Matt Hardy Edge Leader episode uh, two nights ago when I was massively drunk. Enjoyed it very much. Um, so yeah. anyone out there, I'm telling you, the, the, these wrestling podcasts are out there right now, like ours, is a dime a dozen. But this one's a little bit different. It comes from a different angle. So I think you should check out Wrestling with Tragedy. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so... So, Angel, 
Uh, this segment is called Five Second Frenzy. It's just to get to know you and and things that you like outside of wrestling. Um, aside from a couple of the questions, but um, it's just a little bit of you, you got five seconds to answer each question, and even if you break the five second rule, it doesn't matter because there's nothing I can do about it. So here we go. First question: What was the favorite match that you ever had? Rob Van Dam and Kid Cash versus the Baldies. You're going to have to check that one out, Jack. Mm -hmm. um, you got to find it. It's hard to find. Your favorite wrestler? Uh, the Four Horsemen. It's a group, but it's, you know, it's the Four Horsemen. Arn Anderson is the, the main, ca main thing. I always loved Arn Anderson. So, but the Four Horsemen, the top. Your favorite opponent? My favorite opponent was, um, I could say, like... Um, Nova. Okay, cool. Last choice. Uh, your favorite food? My favorite food? Pizza. Yeah, New York boy, pizza. Nice. Love it, love it. Very nice. Uh, your favorite alcoholic beverage? Foster's, Australian for beer, mate. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, your favorite film? My favorite film, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Awesome. Nice. Uh, favorite TV show? Quantum Leap. Nice. Favorite musical artist? Queen. Awesome, dude. Yes. Favorite female body part? Ass. I'm oh, an yeah. ass man. I'm an ass man. Just yeah, like Harko yeah. Holly, he said the same thing. Um, yeah. And the last one for Five Second Frenzy Angel is your favorite curse word. Are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's quite British, isn't it? Are you shitting me? I got that from, true story, I got that from, eight, okay, H.C. Loke, um, who was the tag team, he was in ECW as a hardcore referee, uh, hardcore ref. The referee guy, yeah. Yeah, but he was also part of the Carnage crew and the first tag team champions for ROH. Okay. With Tony DeVito. Yeah. When we were in ECW, he used to always go, are you shitting me? Because I used to do, you know, like when I stuck my finger in his mouth with my dick cheese, <laughs> he'll say, he'll say, are you fucking shitting me? You know, like he'll say shit like that. <laughs> So I said, brother, I'm stealing that. And he's like, what? what? And so then on TV, there is a show. I used to use it all the time. When the first time I ever used it, I said, oh, are you shitting me? <laughs> and I look at, and I look at the curtain where, and you see him looking through the curtain like, motherfucker. <laughs> You're still my saying, so are you shitting me is one of my, you know, another one is, are you sell it, bitch? Sell it, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, sell it, bitch was a, a thing like, um, like um, we used to do that in wrestling where I used to fucking, like, let's say Danny Doring, and Danny Doring will be hitting me and I just like chop him, sell it, bitch, or, or, um, or like I kick him in the balls, sell that, bitch, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know, or your mother, I just slept with your mother, sell it, bitch, you know, like, yeah. oh, God, like that. It's a, it's a more of a, you know, like you do something, then you want to get a reaction out of somebody. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Your mom's pussy tastes so sweet. So that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Angel, I, I want to thank you again for your time tonight. Jack, have you got any last words? No, just awesome. Like, thank you for your time tonight. It's been probably the longest interview we've done so far. I thought we've yeah. About we've, had, we've, had a little, we've had a little marathon here, but we've had a good time. No, I'm really great, happy man. you had a good time. Um, sorry for the delay. I really no. appreciate you guys understanding. Um, I really loved being on your show, especially with the Harry Potter scarf. You never, you never <laughs> let that down, Jack. And um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I had a good time, man. You guys are awesome. I, I know it's late. Um, it's, shit, it's probably way late over there. It's nearly but, three a.m. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, you know, but I, thanks again. I really appreciate you uh, making time to have me on your show. No, no worries, problem, Angel. Man. We, we love you, man. And uh, I want to say that, like, uh, you should be extremely proud of everything that you accomplished in the wrestling business. You know, you were there at the height of wrestling and you did such a great job. You guys got over so well with the ECW audience and you should That's be very I mean. proud with everything that you accomplished in wrestling. I appreciate it, man. And thank you, man. I wish I could do it all over again one more time. But, you know. I'm at that age, so now I have to look at other ventures to still use the wrestling, but there's other opportunities out there that a pro wrestler can do, and I'm taking advantage of it.
Cool, brother. And um, once we finish off, uh, once we stop recording, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Um, but I'm not black. Um, <laughs> I want to thank you again for your time. Um, so, time, ladies and gentlemen, this was our interview with Angel from ECW and Da Baldi's. I am one of your hosts, California Fury, alongside Jack Wallace. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, Love it. we will see Not you next time when we interview Headbanger Thrasher. Thank you very much. <laughs>